be here. I think we're live. Hi, everybody. I'm going to make breakfast. And what I'm going to do is periodically come on because I'm kind of changing my ideas and thoughts on how I'm going to be. I don't want to use the word rationing food, but using the food good. There's nobody here anyways. Um, so I'm going to have Gary sit. Let's see if anybody comes on. And then I'll periodically come on as I do. Hi, Nikki. Hi. What I'm going to do is periodically now with, with the new new norm for now only, I'll come on when I'm doing some cooking and the way I cook, it's not a cooking show, but Gary can sit and talk to you guys while I'm doing our work. What we're doing today is we have two days of sunlight and I'm really excited about that. No rain, they said for the week. I'm going to give you the seat in a minute. Yeah. And um, so we're going to desperately get out there and get some stuff planted and cleaned up. I can work on my deck when it's raining because anytime it stops, I can run out and do the deck. But in the garden, it's it's I don't want to get all full. I don't like the rain. <laughs> but anyways, I'm going to make something to eat. I don't even know what I'm going to make. And Gary's going to chit chat with you. And that's kind of something new we're going to try. And if you're not interested, just get off. But um that's all we're going to do. I just want to say hello. Everything's going good. You know, we have enough food. We have enough water. Uh, real quick, my daughter bought a bunch of water and she was so sweet. I'm still so excited about this. She bought a bunch of water and she saw one of her neighbors outside watching. And then he went out with a jug and he went and got water somewhere, a bottle of water. And she went over and put on his doorstep a whole case of water. And I said, did you talk to him? She said, oh, no, he doesn't speak English. I said, it doesn't matter. You can communicate no matter what. No, no. She says, he doesn't speak English. I just wanted to leave the water for him. Let me tell you, when he came home and found the water, she saw him drag it in. He came running over to thank her. And he spoke enough English that they both got to talk. And that was so sweet. I'm turning this over to Gary. He can try to go through this. You'll know how to use the mouse. Yeah, I'll try Okay. To and I'm going to make something to eat because we want to get outside and... I'm not going to call it warm weather, but I think we're going to be about 65 today. Tomorrow they said 70. Yeah, it's, it's more about the dryness. No. Yeah, and so we can get out there and get our work done because he'll talk about how important it is to get produce going. You can take the seat, you can move the camera, and I want to see what we've got. Okay, yeah, hi everyone. Yeah. I have a question. I'm going to interrupt you. We've got mashed potatoes left. Do you want me to make more than we're going to eat now so you can come back and pick at it later? Or do you want me to make just enough for now? Just enough for now. Just enough yep. for now? Do you know which is from the day before and which is from the yesterday? The one that was sitting on the bottom. Oh. That, that's, that's from last night. And that's okay, from good. Night so I don't want to waste anything. Okay. Okay, let's see. A lot of comments are coming in, so I'll kind of go up the top a little bit. I don't think I can pull this back anymore, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, California, New York, and now Illinois are lock in lockdown, or I'm not sure what they call it in different states, shelter in place. But I see Susan Nettles from Chicago. I believe Illinois is shut down. Um, I'm make more. as of this morning so I think it's right now in the US it's mainly the I would say the larger areas where you've got a lot of international travel with larger airports I'm not a hundred percent sure whether that's going to stay that way what what's going to happen uh, let's see you know what real quick in case anybody wants to know and then I'll and then I'll give it back to Gary. What I'm doing is we had powdered mashed potatoes the other night and to try to get nutrients in. What are you laughing about? Oh, uh, it's just someone's comment, that's all. The what that I'm not letting you talk? No. Oh. <laughs> she almost let you talk. I almost let them talk, but I want to get this going. What then somebody's gonna come in and ask what I'm doing. We had powdered mashed potatoes. I'm trying to get more nutrients in. So I take greens from the garden and garlic chives because we're running low on powdered garlic and I tried to order it. I can't get it. 
So um, I, I chopped that up in my chopper that's not here right now, and I added it into the potatoes. So good. So now I'm just going to make something with eggs. Now Gary can do all the talking he wants. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Pat Lucking from British Columbia. There, there. I've been asked to stay, stay home too. So gate, gateway cities, I think, are the ones that are getting asked to stay home right now. So British Colum British Columbia. That's a gateway to the Pacific for Canada, and LA and and um, San Francisco went first. They're gateway cities from the Pacific. Yeah, we're a good match. If we were both quiet, it would be very quiet here. I have told that story to somebody, and I'm going to say it. You go and Skype your friend in Australia, and the two of you sit in front of the monitor and don't say anything. Yeah. And then you said, well, gee, that's how we hang out. And for an hour, the two of them will say he'll be drinking coffee, and the other one's doing whatever, drinking beer. I don't know. And they'll sit and they'll Skype by just looking at each other. Like maybe it's a guy thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's, there are talkative people in Australia, but where I'm from, most people aren't, I guess. You tell them to ring the bell. Oh, so. the, the plastic, if you're looking about, talking about this, uh, Jennifer, this is the screen Robbie drops when she's doing the hummingbird shots. This is tool. She drops the tool down so that the hummingbirds, when she likes to have the window open so you can see the hummingbirds in the background. And by dropping the tool here, she's got strung up from the ceiling. She drops that to the floor. If a hummingbird gets in the house, it'll fly around and leave. Other, otherwise, it could go into the house. So if any hummingbirds come in, they won't get into the rest of the house. I don't even know what this is going to turn out like. Not anything? No, well, I'm having, there's a little bit of glare and I'm trying to. Do you want me to close the window behind you? I don't know if that'll help or not. That, that might. Don't move, don't move. You're fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sorry. Good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. It does a little bit. It's still coming from the south, but you can't do much about that. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that, Alicia. Yeah, we're going to see a few people that are going to come down with it. Hopefully, you know, everything will be good. I worry about my parents. My brother, God bless him, is taking care of my parents, my brother, my sister-in-law. And do you think, I don't even need to say how old they are. They're from World War II. Uh, so World War II vets. So I'm really, really worried about that. I'm worried about that. And I don't know a lot of stuff. So we just have to keep going and do the best we can. Yeah. Right now we're starting to get a little bit more organized with our garden. Um, staying home has freed up more time to get out into the garden if it would stop raining a little bit. So we're going to really garden a lot more this year, I think. And I, I believe the price of produce is going to go up because they're going, the, the people that normally go out to eat that maybe go to fast food restaurants, they're going to have, have to find food somewhere and it hasn't really set in, but there's going to be, I think there's going to be a greater demand for produce, which will lift the prices up 
Now that's going to help farmers, but the rest of us, you know, it'd be a good idea to start thinking about planting at least something. If you don't already garden, just plant a few things. And that, if you start now, you might be ahead of the curve. Yeah, the hummingbirds are kind of, right now we've got a lot of them, but they're starting to come in. It seems like waves of them have moved through a couple of times where we've got a lot of hummingbirds for a day or two and they must be moving further north. Okay, thanks, Pat. Yeah, I haven't really been working on a lot of projects like the office chair. I've sort of been busy doing other things, but I do want to get back into getting more projects done. reading comments? Or? Yeah, I'm reading comments. Oh, okay. Well, you can also talk. You want to put a video together on your reads? No? Yeah. I... And I don't know if I should even bother videotaping myself. I work in the garden today. I did the other day, but I haven't put that one up even. Um, yeah, th this is actually tool. Same thing I use in the garden. Yeah. So what she uses in the garden to keep things off a of, vegetables this comes in in rolls and that's a, the exact same thing that she's using and that's spelled t-u-l-l-e is that correct yes t-u-l-l-e yes exactly i'm in yard clothes so literally i've got three layers of clothes on it's still cold to me i'm going to go eat and go straight into the garden and get stuff done How's your garden going? Uh, oh, I didn't know you saw This is this is so when when Robbie's got the window open behind me, when she's usually doing shots from the kitchen, this is to prevent the hummingbirds getting into the house. So if they come into this area that's kind of um, caged off, I get I would call it caged off. They will fly in and fly out the window. So that we haven't even really had that many hummingbirds in the house for a long time since you put that up. But they tend to stay out outside. We don't want them in the house. We're not trying to turn them into pets or anything. We just want them to feed outside. And Robbie just wants, if, if you had the screen there, you wouldn't be able to see the hummingbirds as well. So this is so she can do her videos here and you can see the hummingbirds in the background. There's a male oriole out the window right now. So the, the decorative tiles are stick-ons, I guess. 
This? Yeah. Yeah, I got it a while ago at the dollar store. I wish I would have bought a second one. Yeah, she put. I, I, I'm hoping you can hear her from there. You probably oh, can. can. You, I don't know. Can you hear me from here or no? Somebody say yes or no. You're on the bottom. Uh, yeah, that's from the dollar store. I was actually from Dollar Tree. I think they still sell them too. Was that a yes or no? Yes. Okay, good. This is almost done. Almost. So answer all the questions because we're going to eat and go outside. Yeah, we, we've been married 27 years and Robbie's got two kids. Okay, there's a lot of yeses, so they can, Nikki. <laughs> they can't hear me. And Pat. What I, what I did real quick, if anybody's interested, is I took the mashed potatoes that we had left over from two nights. I went ahead and made the whole thing because there wasn't that much. And I mixed it with three eggs. I could have added in a little flour or something to it, but I didn't. I mixed it up. I, I said earlier my mashed potatoes had shredded greens from the garden, and what I did was I made the regular box mashed potatoes the way, well, I never measure. I just made it. And when it was done and set, I had taken fresh greens from the garden, um, garlic chives and onion, walking onions as well. I put it in my chopper. Let me get the chopper. Move it, Molly. And, and next time I do it, maybe I'll do a video. It's just so fast. Just put it in the chopper, chopped it up. And when the potatoes were done, I put it in, mixed it up. And it's so good. The reason I have to use more garlic chives is I'm out of garlic. And I tried to order online yesterday and I couldn't, you know, I have home delivery. They seem to be out of everything. So it's not important. We have a little bit of garlic. And I've just mixed it in. So it's not really cooked, but it's added in after, after the potatoes had set. So it kind of, it was so, you said it was really good. Yeah, so what good. I did was I took the leftovers and I can't give that to the dogs because I added in onions. Otherwise, they get some. And I added in three eggs this time, what was left in the containers that I had. Mixed it up, and I'm kind of making it like a scrambled eggs. And it smells so good right now. And this way we have less. I'm looking to make sure we have less waste because I want to make sure everything I make basically gets used. And Gary eats all day. I don't. Believe it or not, I, I I think he eats more than me, but then he burns more. But he eats he eats all day. So this way you've got something later, too, because I made enough. And then I'll figure out dinner later. And that's it. That's what I'm doing. And we figured we'd come on, say hello, wish everybody a good day. And even microgreens. I want to get more. I really want to get microgreens growing on the counter so I can put that off and even put that in boxed potatoes. I'm trying to add in nutrients to a lot of the food that a lot of us are going to be eating now, be it can, box, processed foods, but get something that has been grown on, like I said, even on your counter, you're, you can grow microgreens, something you can toss in. If you've got questions, go for it. Now that there was a question about what they can start now indoors. Microgreens. And microgreens you can grow. Two, three days, four days. Any time of the year. Lettuce but, grows really fast once it starts. Uh, and you can... You know, that's a good thing. Any of these things can be used really quick. Last night in our potatoes, I also have a broccolini out there, a little tiny broccolini. I took the bottom leaves. The leaves are wonderful. So even as your plants are growing and you think they're not ready, they're ready enough to start using the bottom leaves. I mean, the whole plant on broccoli, collard, kale, it doesn't matter. You don't have to wait till it's a big plant. Start using those bottom leaves, and as you take off the bottom leaves anyways, it forces the plant to grow quicker and bigger. So you want to get stuff growing that you can start harvesting from the bottom. I mean, you can grow radishes and carrots, all that, but then you got to wait, uh, you know, the 30, 60 days, 90 days on some. But with greens, as soon as they start coming up, you can start taking the bottom leaves. Talk. Yeah, and, <laughs> and if you plant too densely you can always take some as microgreens and let some grow further along and then plant them out outdoors outdoors when the weather gets better so even when you start planting your seeds you could plant extra use some 
thin them a little, use some as microgreens and plant the rest. Yeah, and that's another another thing. Oh. All of our onion tops I've been planting right now because some of them are starting to grow already. And I've been just planting the onion tops. It doesn't matter if they don't really produce onions, they'll produce seeds, which will produce more plants for next year. And a lot of my onions in my garden are self same So I let them go to seed and, you know, then move the seedlings around to where I want them. So remain lettuce tops. Yeah, anything really that you can you get from the store is worth trying growing again. But lettuce is another one that will set their seed again. Set their roots again, I should say. Okay, guys. Yeah, actually, this is tool. It's not mosquito netting, it's tool. So this is what Robbie uses in a garden to protect the plants from the rabbits and ground squirrels and different things. She's, she got the broccoli head last night. The only little broccoli head I brought it in. She looks so like, don't eat it, give it to me. So she got the broccoli head last night. It was a tiny one. All right. This is almost done. So we're, we're on lockdown and we're, we can only go to the grocery store if you want to go to the grocery store. The banks are slowly shutting down, you figured out, if they don't have glass. So the big banks, we found out some of them are shutting down if they've got an outdoor, what do you call it? You went to it. Yeah, yeah a drive-through. Drive-through. Um, but the, they closed the, the main bank itself. Uh, I guess like dress shops and clothing stores. Anything that's grocery, they're leaving open. Anything that's hardware, they're leaving open. Schools are all shut. All schools. They've shut colleges, grammar schools, high school, everything's shut. And yet you go out and you said you went to the bank and you would never even know there was anything different. You said there were thousands of cars out there. Yeah, the, there's still a lot of people driving around and... A lot of businesses that I had to drive through, like auto repair shops, gas stations, the necessities are still open. So I didn't go near a lot of stores. So I kind of where I went yesterday, it was mainly industrial sort of areas. I'm having a problem getting sugar. Thank goodness I did store up on sugar cannot order sugar. Every time we go to order sugar, it doesn't matter if it's Walmart, Target, anybody yesterday I couldn't get. But I've got plenty. I've got plenty. It'll probably last me a few months. What else is there going on? Um, I think inspired by Ebony. Dot, uh, e inspired by Ebony, I think she's asked a couple of times. I'm not sure. Someone else asked how, how we met. We met at the fairgrounds at an event, but I already, I already knew who she was, and she know, knows some of my Australian friends. He was stalking me. No, no, no. I, I hope not. <laughs> so she, she knows someone from my hometown that had actually been over here. Is somebody from her? Yeah, no, he didn't. Did he stay here? No, Born he didn't. stay here. Okay. I had some people stay here, but you knew a few of them that had stayed Yeah, I knew of. Zita? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of people that we knew in common, because there's a lot, and Americans may not know this, but there's a lot of travel backwards and forwards between Australia and the US. It's kind of, no, no more. No. I could name half a dozen people that have, have got relatives or neighbours that have immigrated to Australia or moved from Australia to here. So it's kind of like, it's surprising once you get 
out and about and you start finding out that you know people you you come across have got relatives that have moved backwards and forwards i'm freezing i make a big thing of mint tea and then i freeze what's left over if we didn't finish it so i can get it the next day i've got to make more it's the last one i can't think of anything else to say i want to go get in that garden and get stuff growing <laughs> Not just growing. Like I said, we've got two days of no rain. We have been raining more than I, I mean, I guess last year we got a lot of rain, but this is just unreal. Um, I'll come back later. I don't know if I'll go live later or tomorrow. I make orange juice in a very unique way. They say to drink a lot of fresh uh, oranges if you can. I, Dr. Oz has been all over YouTube and he's saying orange juice or oranges twice a day because you don't hold that. It's water soluble. Well, it's not going to come out right. You say it. Water soluble. Or water soluble. Vitamin C. So he wants you to have orange juice twice a day. Here's the thing. I got a call from my medical group that tells me I can't go out. When I was 19 years old, I came down with pneumonia. I didn't even know it. I was running around and running around. I was coughing, but I thought it was fine. And I ended up at the hospital at night. I thought it was appendix. It turned out to be pneumonia. So I've got scar tissue, so I've got to be careful. So they let me know to be careful with what's going on because this particular virus, and I am going to talk about it. Let me say one thing, and I'll go back to the virus. I am going and trying to figure out, should I not talk about what's going on or should I talk about it? I've gone to some garden people that I watch that are completely not talking about the gorilla, is that what you call it? No, the elephant in the room. They're just fluffing it off like everything is fine. And it is fine. I think we're all going to make through it. It's just the different thing we have to do. And we all are going to have to adjust a different way. Then I see other people, multiple people going on and sitting on, on YouTube crying and, and praying. And that's very good. I think it's very good. But what I want to do is I want to, I want to continue to do what I do. Thank goodness Gary and I can live together and not kill each other. I may yell once in a while. But we, we don't kill it. We get along, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> and we both have our own things we're doing, and we do things together. And so, basically, I am going to talk about it because it is something we are all dealing with. It's not just Gary and I dealing with it. The whole world, basically, is dealing with this. And I think we just have to think about, try to stay calm because that brings up our immunity system. And just try to do things. And, yes, we should if we can laugh about things going on in the house and different things. So I am not going to be the gardener on YouTube. That's going to pretend nothing is happening. Everything is fine. You're not going to hear. It's not my nature. I can't do that. I just can't. There is something going on. I have gone through my panic attacks. I literally Gary and I the other night where we were so cold. I think we were, I think when it first hit on the first night, they literally said, you're all on lockdown. It went from, uh, the mayor's coming on and then the governor coming on. And I panicked right away. I did panic because Gary, I had the chills. Gary, had, it turned out we were running 97 point. You were running 97.6. I was running 97.7 or something. I think it was a type of panic. So your body got cold. We're fine now. We all are going to go through this different ways. But then at some point, let's get our panic out and then let's go on with life and get done what we have to done. That, do. That's that's my outlook. I'm not saying it's right, but that is my outlook. Now I have to get serious. I mean, my daughter may need some fruits and vegetables. We gave some to a neighbor. You know, I mean, we help who we can and we have, and then for, for me to be able to help anybody, I've got to still help myself. It's kind of like if you're on an airplane, the mask comes down, you're supposed to put it on yourself first and take care of your kids. So if we can get our gardens going more efficiently, I think you're more efficient probably than me. I yours grows massive mine i i i treat each little plant like a a puppy dog oh this one looks so good i'm gonna try to see no 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 it's gonna go into compost and so i think we just i have to look at things differently that's all and in the meantime i don't i'm not a i'm not a chef so i come in and i look and see what i've got and i make something to eat and that's why I haven't really done any real cooking because I don't have measurements. No, guys, I can't give you any more cheese right now. You already had. So I'm just, I'll come on periodically. Like I said, I have a unique way of making orange juice. I do different things differently. And I'm just trying to make sure that we use everything 
basically, and we make sure we compost everything. That's all I have to say. I think we're, we're going to be fine, but we have to deal with what we have to deal with. That's all. I called my neighbor yesterday, and we sat chit-chatting on the phone, and I told her about maybe I should go live periodically. She said, go for it, go for it. So that's it. I don't want to make this too long. We didn't even want to go 30 minutes. Our breakfast is done. We didn't eat because we had things to do. We actually watched Nick better off this morning first. Then we got our chores done, our basic chores, and now we're going to eat. Anything else you want to say? You yeah. finish it up? I'm uh, done. Oh, I said my piece. Well, Nancy Parker is asking people to that, that so to help make masks for the healthcare workers and that to me is is a good positive idea the mask that i wear out this isn't what is it and i can get it yeah this isn't an ideal mask this doesn't have a rating but it's to me it's better better than nothing so if i wore something like this out it's not going to catch everything but it might catch something so that would minimize the amount coming out well, these are old these are both regular paper masks they're dust masks and we use that because we do a lot of cleaning and different things around here so these are both made in not here let's just put it it's not from the united states here's your is this the one you said this is the only one you got with a few left in there yeah so that this and is, that's made in the United States, I believe, right? Yeah, this is MSI. This is a the N ninety one. N ninety. This is an N ninety five. Now this is a contractor's packet package, and I use this if I'm doing sanding or something like that. So these are in short supply. I believe the hospital workers have even better ones than this, but they're in short supply. So even if you've got something like this that you may not be using yourself, that, you know, if you contact your local health care, you know, somewhere that may, someone that may need something a little extra like that, even the people uh, that aren't actually involved in, um, taking care of patients, you know, they, they may need something like this if they were cleaning the lobby or something like that. I don't know. But, yeah, I've been going out wearing the less expensive masks and yes. just tossing them. So they're, But I'm not really interacting with a lot of people. That's just as if I'm going to the post office or something like that, I'll wear that in and then... I'll discard it. They said you can wear, if worse comes to worse, even pull a bandana up across your face. Something, you know, some people say it's not going to work, but I look at it, whatever you can do, you do. And they just don't know how bad it is. It, it, the virus may not be quite as bad as they say. You know, you, I don't know. So we can all just do what we do. And... I think even just coming on and saying hello and kind of keeping in touch. Some people live alone, you know, and some people, maybe their spouse or significant other or whatever is gone and they're alone. If we can come on and do that, um, I'll try I'll try to see if this works. I don't want to get, if I get a ton of thumbs down, nobody wants it, then I won't do it. I, I just figured I'm making breakfast. We're going to go out and get gardening and, and just say hello or... We're fine, and I'm not going out. I'm I'm not going out, and I, I'm not going to be able to see my parents. That bothers me. And but I am keeping in touch on the phone. I talk to my brother every day. My sister has been texting every day, and I talk to my daughter. So we so I'm talking to people all all day, uh, or texting at least all day. Anything else you want to say? I talk to some of your family, or a text we message back and forth. I'm done. I don't know what else to say. I mean, I want to go. I'm anxious to go out there and get some stuff done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the morning gardener says hello. Oh, the morning gardener. <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Yeah, we missed him this morning. I know you were on, but we were trying to get our stuff together, so we didn't tune in. Yeah, you know, he's he's a he's good because he's not he is understanding the elephant in the room. You know, he talks about it and then goes on, which is good. Let's get our gardens going. Let's get things doing. What's going on? I mean, that's good. I I just. 
you know, I, everybody does it their own way. Some people want to pretend the elephant in is, isn't in the room and don't want to bring up anything. I don't know how you cannot bring up something that's worldwide. Worldwide. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that the people are going to, bar, I'm talking, referring to Barbara's comment. I'm hoping people are going to start gardening more and re understand how important it is to eat food that, you can just walk out, get it as fresh as you can, and that'll improve your health. It can bring it's boosts the immune system. It doesn't all have to be fresh. We're not going to all get fresh, but any little bit. Perlmutter talked about Dr. David Perlmutter talked about that, right? Yeah. To get whatever you can. I do follow Dr. David Perlmutter. He's also, I believe, on YouTube, but he's on Facebook, and he's been he's been coming on almost every day. And you need to get some real live food if you can into your system like people are asking him oh i can't find organic and he even said two days ago forget the organic just get what you can get but add something to it so it makes whatever you're eating more nutrient for yourself and for your body and i know people are gardening because i now have my brother and sister-in-law gardening yeah And she was smart. She ran into the nursery and got a whole bunch of plants. They bought three raised beds. They sent me photos and they just set them up and they've got food growing. And she bought big plants. She was lucky to get them. And so they can start harvesting on the side and add to whatever they're eating. I can't read the screen from, from okay. where I am. So Yeah, I'll kind of go back up a little because there was one I was trying. But we can, we can almost go. The dogs think yeah. they're getting more cheese. I gave you all yeah, cheese. Gen I gave you cheese. Okay, Jennifer Kasky. I think last night was the first night. I was just exhausted from the whole week. Last night was the first night that I actually pretty much slept through the night. But, yeah, it's, it is stressful, but you just have to try to check yourself and try to remain calm and don't – there's three things you could do, fight, flight or freeze and you don't want to get into the freeze and you and you want to try to sort of catch yourself and get into the fight sort of mode so we you sort of prepared and you're aware of your surroundings and work with what you can uh, and there are people Catherine Catherine Tyler yeah, there are people out there that are, are alone. And if you know someone, whether it's a neighbor or a friend or a relative, it might be a good idea to get in contact with them. Um, Robbie was talking to our neighbor yesterday and she called another one of our neighbors who, who's also a friend and he's, he's alone too. So Yeah, I gotta call him too. Yeah, it's good to keep in She's contact. She's alone too, but her husband's working around the clock yeah it's good to keep in contact and maybe be mindful about people you might know that are alone and maybe give them a call it's not gonna you know it's it's going to be a good thing to do that yeah it's, just to say hello yeah. you know and if they're if they want to vent let them vent let, yeah. let them vent and get it out because that might get it out where they'll calm down and then do something else Leonard Schapp Thank you for your advice, masks and gardening. Leonard Schapp. Yeah. Gee, I wonder who Leonard Schapp is. Well, get that third bed up, Leonard. <laughs> 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 what does the F mean on your fridge? Oh, someone's asked. Geez, someone's commented so about that a couple old. of that times. Something. Somebody gave me something. Actually. This is from Leonard Shep. <laughs> he used to work at the studios years ago, and he gave me one of these, and I redid it. It was, it's just, uh, it's one of these signs they put up in restaurants, and it used, it's supposed to say A, so it's the opposite, you know. This establish, establishment received a score of 1 to 10 percent at the time of inspection, inspection, for God's sakes, don't eat here. I actually got this from Leonard, and here's a cute tip. You know how you get refrigerator magnets and you don't know what to do with them and you don't want them? I actually staple them to things and now I can put this on my fridge or any place that's got, you know, th these are magnets. 
And when they're stapled, you can use them. And that's what's really cool. I've got a recipe that I'm going to make this, I don't know, today or tomorrow. And did the same thing with the recipe. You know, you even get them, we still get phone books sometimes. And they got magnets. So you staple them and make sure the flat part of the staple, see if I can show this. I don't know if I can. Get the flat part of the staple on the back side. So when you're putting it up, it won't scratch. And then you've got the front side this way. And you can use those magnets so you don't have to toss them out. And I never talked about it, but uh, what was that? Did I answer all the questions? I, guess no, I, I think did. so, yeah. But that's what the F sign came from. But doing this, I was thinking about it and I sat and talked with my neighbor yesterday and she encouraged me. She said, what do you have to lose? Go for it, go for it. I told her I'm I'm trying to get down and, and be calm, so I've got to make sure that I I don't want to use the word pull myself together. I haven't fallen apart. I guess I've gotten I'm not even angry. I've gotten worried, but she said just go for it. It helps everybody, and and she's right. She's a super lady. I don't think she's watching, but the, she her and her husband are super people, great people. But like I said, she, you know she's. She's a home alone, too, because he's got a job where he's got to be out um, helping people all the time. So I figured I will. I and mean, we have almost gone. We're 40 minutes and we're going to go eat. Anything else you want to say? And I will come back. We're going to come back. If this is OK with you and you like this, I will do this periodically. I clean my kitchen. I think you get into that nesting thing when all this started. I started really cleaning and scrubbing and. And even my daughter said she scrubbed and cleaned up her house. It looks so nice that the kids are picnicking in the house. I, I know that even a lot of people are going to go nuts because they're locked in the house with their kids and their spouses. And they do want you to get out. They want you to take a walk, walk your dog, they keep saying. I mean, they're not expecting us to literally not walk outside. Um, I can't think of anything else. If you're doing a community garden. This I haven't heard anybody talk about, but I'm sure somebody is. If you're doing a community garden where you're actually gardening with a bunch of people, at that point, when you pick your vegetables, just to be safe, I would make sure you wash those really good. Uh, maybe, I don't know if a vinegar wash would help or something. That's if you're doing a community garden. Nothing's getting into ours. I'm not worried about it. I just rinse everything really good, sometimes under warm water. Anything else you have? That's just because a community garden, you don't know who's walking through it It's if it's not coming out of your, your own yard. But I would say if you can get microgreens growing, that would even help. Just clip some microgreens and throw it in some canned soup. I can't think of it. I think we're going to have salmon tonight. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to take that out. Yes, last night. I forgot. No, go ahead and answer. Yeah, I'm just trying oh. to. Because if I'm not talking, you should be talking. Yeah, I know that. I'm just I, not much of a talker. I was lucky so. enough to get some salmon on sale before all this, and I froze it in small packages. And I forgot I want to take it out. And salmon. Um, I don't know how much work I'll be doing in the garden, but like tonight, if I if it thaws enough, I'll just put the salmon. It's already washed. I have it ready to go. We'll take it out and put it in a frying pan, like I made the eggs just now, with soup. And Well, first of all, I'll brown this a little bit, and then I'll pour the soup on it and add in garden vegetables. And there's our meal, and if you want to make rice on the side, that's up to you, because you've got rice. Yeah. want to hear you yeah i know they want to hear me but <laughs> see I'm this lady is mad that i don't let you talk i should just i should put him on camera leave the room totally and give you an hour with him i can't even get him half the time to listen to me sometimes i talk and he just are you there yeah i heard you and he does repeat back a lot of times everything i said he is he, you've never been a, a big talker no neither are my brothers i don't even know if he knows my name you rarely call me. <laughs> that's been a joke going around here. Yeah, I have to tell him when he says my name, I get really nervous because he never, he doesn't say much. 
Your, your brother's quiet too? Both of my brothers are. He was talkative when he was here. Yeah. Ah, uh, but his wife was talk more talkative. That's true. That's how it works, probably. But you're uh, you're right. I'm both your brothers. Your sisters and I got along good. I think we all chit chat. Okay. All I have to do, yeah, to, to keep talking, all I have to do is um, read the comments out loud. There you go. And respond. Uh, yeah, I could do that. I'm. I'm not used to social. What do you call it? Social. This is a guy that I, I, I think, don't. I don't have Facebook or any of that. No. The only reason he's got a computer is because I thought my computer wasn't working, and I ended up getting another one. I gave him my computer, which he swore he would never use. He didn't want. It turned out my computer was fine. It was the artwork I was working on. It was so much that I just needed something with more RAM. So he ended up, he did start using it. Thank goodness, because we wouldn't be here. Because really, that's how got, you got you got into wood chips and all that. And the yeah. gardening again. Because I was gardening here and I gave up. I It was clay soil and it was so much work. And before I did, I wasn't doing any compost in place or anything. And so now doing compost in place, it's so easy. I love gardening. But yeah, it was him with the wood chips. It was almost dangerous. I'm going into the story of the wood chips again. But... You did start using it a lot. And then you found John Kohler. Yeah. Yes, Lisa. I, I'm, being a listener, I don't think I, I can't imagine a couple being both talkers. So there's kind of a balance between talking and listening. So, but there's nothing wrong with uh, being a listener. As long as you hear me. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Techno Geek, Robbie is actually pretty computer savvy more so than I am. I used to be where I used to work back in Australia. I, I used to program um, CNC machines, uh, computer numerical controlled machinery, but now I'm kind of more hand tools. So. They're going to think, why is my water so foggy? You know what I do with my water? I'm supposed to take calcium, they say. So I take a calcium pill, and I just drop it in, and I sip on it all day until it's gone. That's why it's foggy. What else do we need to talk about? Because we should eat. And what I don't like is I'm looking out the window, and I see clouds. And I thought it was supposed to be sunny today. Yeah, today it's going to be touchy clouds. But it's I don't That's believe sunny. we're getting any rain. I don't want rain. I want to get a. I want to finish the back wall that I started working on and be able to. I might test them all with a bunch of um, squash seeds that are I know are hybrids. It won't matter if they come up, and then as they come up, I can start putting in zucchini and replacing them later, even if I compost them back in. And then I want to finish the front part of the yard too. Well, not finish. I'll never finish, but get stuff done and finish anything we didn't plant yet. I've got still broccolini. I think you bought that we still have. Two left? Yeah, I think there's two broccolini. We've got some tree collards to plant. Yeah. I'm yeah, we, plant we live them. in. Annie Irish. We live in Southern California. And yes, Pat, I, this will, some things will change and there'll be new opportunities to replace the things that we're going to lose. And we were talking about this this morning. A lot of these restaurant workers are going to be out of work, but there's going to be an increase in home delivery services. So perhaps some of these people that may have been waiters, waitresses, and um, working in the industry, the restaurant industry, maybe they can transfer into the home delivery jobs that are going to be opening up. So right now, a lot of home delivery services can't keep up with the demand. And that may be something new that's going to be um, a new business coming in for a while. Farmers markets apparently are doing really well. So I imagine locally grown markets and farmers markets might um, 
increase as a oh, as a so. business. And plus, people are. I think people who never garden before are going to start thinking about putting flower pots and different things around just to grow something. I think there's going to be a lot more gardening coming up, just to have something extra. You don't think so? Yeah, I think oh, so. I think. And I think the morning gardener mentioned that seeds online have gone up in price, and that's something too. You know, you might. I haven't really looked. I haven't even thought about different things, but there's different things that will be like small business opportunities in gardening that will sort of open up. The, the people selling seeds online are really making almost no money. They sell them, the people I bought from before, it's like, uh, two. let's say $2. And if they're putting a stamp on, so and then they have to pay the online service, and then they got to pay, let's say they got to pay eBay if it's from eBay. They got to pay PayPal. PayPal takes automatically 30 cents for the invoice. By the time they literally get for one order of seeds, I think they're left with 30 cents. But they are going to have to raise it. And the other thing might be supply and demand. They may be getting a lot of orders in now. And yeah. so they're trying to maybe do something that way. Yeah, Elizabeth Magal, uh, I'm going, I'm not going to pronounce her surname correctly. Magalanas. Please read my message that I sent. Good night. Robbie, I've been talking about the situation. I really want to help you and anyone else that don't already know that the future is very bright. And she left a heart. Thank you so Maybe. much. There, you know, I think we all go through where we we come down and then we have to come up again. And I think I'm I've done my down, I think. And we just wait and see. I'll be honest, yesterday I did something I haven't done in days. I didn't even turn on the news. It's like I can't do anything. So I, I did other stuff around here yesterday. And I also found out from my daughter, she really watched none of the news to speak of. We, I didn't watch any news. I put on Hallmark all night and I fell asleep with Hallmark on. And I think I talked about that before. I wrote them a message when this first started online. Please, if anything, I said, this is the time to bring your Christmas movies on. And a couple people were upset. They probably liked the Golden Girls. But you know what? They started it last night. And I watched it. And it, it did make me feel better. So we think we've got to do things to make us feel better, even if it's, it's gardening or cooking or any crafts i'll do some i'll do some hummingbird crafts maybe next week i i want to make the dots we're all going to start getting the hummingbirds and um i'll show you maybe we'll i'll try to get a video up so you can see it in case you don't want to hear me some people said i talked too long just get to the point and then we could do some live because i've got tons of hummingbirds here tons they're starting to build nests we got a cooper's hawk nest too in the yard which doesn't seem to be bothering the hummingbirds, thank goodness. So we'll try, you know, craft anything you'd like to do. If you'd like to knit, go knit yourself a hat or a scarf or, or maybe knit something for somebody. Scarves, they're really quick. I've made a few scarves. And fold it over and make a pocket so you have a scarf, a long knitted scarf with a pocket in it. That's really nice. Whatever you like to do, and especially if you're on your home, if you're in a state where you're on lockdown, uh, make something for a friend or a neighbor. It, I, I think I, I think that's all we can do right now is, is a smile, a phone call, uh, say hello, keep your distance. They, they keep saying we're supposed to treat everybody as if we are, you know, have this issue. So that's, that's a difficult thing to do, but uh, we do the best we can. That's all we can. I'm hoping that in, soon this will be over and we'll learn new experiences we'll have new experiences as far as more social, maybe getting together online or by phone or, and maybe finding a hobby that you didn't know you really liked or really enjoyed, whether it's painting or drawing or, or knitting or like whatever. I, I don't know. What else do you have to say? No, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think Susan Nettles, your breakfast is now brunch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, Almost. So we're gonna we're gonna go eat. I I'm gonna be honest. I am a I really am not a breakfast person. I tend to get up in the morning, run and get a bunch of stuff done that has to be done for the day, and then I go out in the garden and do stuff. And I usually don't come in until noon. He likes breakfast. Do you actually like breakfast? You find something all day. Yeah, I, I because he burns. I you, burn a lot. 
I burn a lot of calories, so I have to really do have to have breakfast, and I and do eat all day. And it's still warm. Okay, I think we've got, I told them we're going to make this 15 minutes. <laughs> it never works. Um, I think we've gone over and we should go eat. Yeah. And I want to get stuff done. And it is here about uh, almost 1120, not quite. And I can't read the comments from here. So I want to thank everybody and try to help out somebody if you can. Stay busy. Watch TV. Watch happy stuff. Don't watch anything. You know, you don't. Find movies and t and shows and stuff that are happy. Go to YouTube and look for happy stuff. I mean, it does make you feel better. I will admit, it does make you feel better. And keep in touch with friends and loved ones and if you're alone. And that's basically it. Yeah, I can't get out into your garden. Get or, out. They do want you to get out if it's not raining. If you can't get out into your garden right now, just sort of maybe think about what you want to grow this coming gardening season. Yeah, because I can't plant everything, but I'm going to separate. Well, I've got walking onions packed, and I'm going to separate my walking onions. And just, uh, I mean, I admit, a lot of times I look at something, and go, eh, it's not that important. I like onions, so the, well, I like green onions, so I'm going to do that. So anything else? Oh, here comes Kitty. She thinks we're having breakfast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to sign off. Is that why you're getting up? Yes. Um, Come here, Kitty. Get, 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 get. You little brat. You little brat. And this is Jack. <laughs> you little brat. She said, you're calling me. I'm not going to come. So I want to wish everybody a good day. I don't know if I'll come back today or what. I do want to make something like a cranberry crunch. Uh, it's real simple. It's just oatmeal and some cranberries I got in the freezer. You can use can. And um, better than no feed. Okay, Karen Bauer said something, and I'm not sure what that means. Oh, someone was asking about what if you can't get sugar? What do you do with your panic? <laughs> there is nothing else. So well, I will get well, sugar. Suggested to get some premix. Oh, that's true. It. You're right. You're absolutely right. Pre if you can find it. Yeah, if you can find that's it. That's true. I uh, first I panic. I feel I'm not going to run out of sugar. I because I'm going to keep watching it and um, I'll get sugar. So we're okay on sugar. I'm not worried about it. I think we have enough for. I'm going to guess a couple months. Yeah, and this is beforehand. We, we were, yeah, we're always. We've all, always pre prepared ahead of time. So it's not like we're rushing out to buy sugar because we need it. We buy sugar because we may need it a couple of months from now. So we've, we try to live that way. I don't know whether I'd call us preppers, but we're prepared. So yeah. we, we don't wait till the last minute if we need something like sugar for the hummingbirds. We try to keep an eye on what we've got and then order it ahead of time. Well, if I saw something on sale, like I saw the this the 25 pound bags of sugar on sale a few months ago. So we ordered actually I've got the sticker how far back I got the sugar and this was June. So we had an order from June. So we're still going through yeah, that. last June. So I was really prepared on sugar. And then I did get some extra sugar just before all this started. There were no more 25 pound bags. So I'm, I'm fine. I'm not worried about the sugar. And in the meantime, anytime I try to do an online order, I'm going to try to get sugar in there. I've had a few of my orders bumped where it looked like it was going to come and then they canceled it out. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'll see what happens, but I always try to throw sugar in there. And I'm, I'm not worried. Not yet. You, you'll know <laughs> when I'm worried, I'm not worried on sugar. Yes, don't. Oh, and I'm not going to wait till my last bag. At that point, I'd be masked up and I'd be going to the stores looking for sugar. I'll, I'll, you know, you, there are people that are wrapping themselves up in bubble wrap and going shopping and stuff. I'm not going to run. I've got a. I've. I've got sugar. I think I should be fine. I think if worse came to worse, I think even three months I would have sugar. So in the meantime, I will keep trying to get a five pound, or they're not five pounds anymore. They're four pounds. I think I'll keep trying to get a, a bag of sugar here and there, and I'm really sure we'll be okay. I'm not worried. I know I always, it's really weird because if something bad happens, I always worry about the animals first, because how do you explain the animals anything? So I worry about them first, and then I figure out what we could do, because we can always do something, you know. So, well, we'd be able to figure something else. I can't, um, we can't get sugar already. Uh, Lisa Jenkins, she can't get sugar. 
it's going to come back. Sugar is processed here. So as long as we have stuff processed in the United States, the only problem is you've got to think about, I don't even know if I really want to say it, it's farmers. It's as much as the farmers have. So, you know, they're farming and the produce and, and sugar and different things. The sugar's from here, right? The sugar's, well, that's imported into the United States. From? From, well, they don't grow much sugar in Hawaii anymore. I think it's mainly Central America now. Okay, let's not panic. <laughs> no, uh, no, but that supply chain I'm not concerned about. The supply chain between the United States and Canada, there's a lot of farm thank products. Thank you, Sandra. Moving backwards. Okay. So I, those, I know we're I'm good on sugar. Yeah, that. because I'll, periodically I'll have to make sure I get these small bags in. If worse came to worse, there is a formula you can cut back. Right now it's a quarter a cup of sugar to one cup of water. I cannot cut that back right now. And the reason is when it's cold and we're still in, I'm going to say winter, even though we're in spring, you can't cut them back. But in the summer, because they do need intake of water, at that point, you can cut it back a little bit. But we're not there yet. So I'm not cutting anything back. They will get exactly the way I've been doing it, especially they're going to nest now and they're building nests and sitting on nests. So I don't want to change anything. You've got a lot of the ones that are migrating up uh, and they're going to be going on their way. So they're loading up and they need fuel. So I don't want to cut them back because of that also, because that sustains them to leave from here and go to wherever they're going. So that's why I can't cut back because then it would, it could deplete them. If, if people are cutting back and they don't know it, they may not be able to go as far as they think, or they may run out. So I'm not cutting anything back. But once the weather turns like in the eighties or nineties, if worse came the worst, I could cut back a little, little bit. Um, I can't remember what the ratio is on that one, but it's just the cutting back a little bit. I've never cut back. I leave it the way it is because we have fountains here and they drink the water when they need water and then they come to the feeders when they need food. So I, I'm sure we'll, I'm, I'm really, I think I'm really good on sugar. So I'm not worried about that. I had the order from June and then luckily, I think um, a little over a month ago before all this started, I went into Walmart and they had up on the top rafters two 25 pound bags that nobody wanted. So they left them up there and I had the guy get them down. So I got those two. And I do go through, I you know, I haven't really timed it, but I think I go through a 25 pound bag in less than a week. So I'll have to see how it works, but I'm pretty sure, we'll see. We'll see, I'm, I'm sure we'll be fine. Anything else before I sign off? No, that's it. Uh, Sandra is waiting for, I, I'm going to try to say her name, Montavo, Montavo, Montalva. 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 Yeah. Um, she's waiting for the hum hummingbirds and she does, I, although I don't have much sugar, you'll get it. No, the sugar's coming in. There were people yesterday on Facebook posting certain stores and I saw the sugar there. I can't remember what grocery store. I think it was actually Albertson. Somebody posted my cousin. I think uh, he posted that they got in small bags of sugar. So the only problem for me is, like I said, I can't go out because when I was 19, I came down with pneumonia and I don't even think about it until one day I was having a checkup quite a few years ago and they did a chest x-ray. And my doctor said, did you know you had pneumonia? You, you've got scar tissue. And I said, oh yeah, I was 19. So they say not to go out. And I'm going to abide by that as much as I can. If I run out of sugar at that point, I'll mask myself up and I'll figure it out. Or Gary will. But we'll be fine. I don't want Gary going to the stores because we don't need to. We don't need to. Yeah, we don't need to. So No, I'm going to probably eat more stuff out of the garden, whether I like it or not. I'll figure it out. I should be fine. Um, I, I did well on soup. I've already talked about that. And so I think we're fine. I think we're going to be okay. And what you do is if you do have any online services, like my daughter was shocked. She got two orders yesterday. I should have told her to put sugar in there. Um, maybe I will next time. She got two orders and it was like a personal shopper going to the store and they were calling her on the phone and telling her they have this, they have that. And the lady went through and then the man, she said, wasn't as good as the lady went through and picked up the groceries she wanted. And she had two orders yesterday. And is it okay to say where? I guess it doesn't yeah, matter. I guess Target. I've had a couple of my order. I've had all my orders from Walmart bumped. I was going to sign up for the year and I was on trial. And right now I, 
I eliminated the trial because to be honest, I am not going to pay them $100 if I can't get get it. When they get their their home delivery service together and they get their drivers back and everything, then I'll pay them if I want the $100 for the year or pay for each individual uh, delivery. My daughter is paying Target for each individual delivery and she loves it. She said the she loves it. Whole Foods, she said, was running out of food. She couldn't get some orders from them. All you can do is if you need something, just put it in. And if it doesn't go through, put it in again. They're getting food. It's just a matter of everybody wants the same thing. So they're trying to get, you know, the truck drivers are all trying to get everything everywhere. Good morning, somebody, oh, good morning Pamela. Uh, good morning, Gary and Robbie. Hope you are both. Well, we are. We're well and safe and we're in trying to see how we're keeping our distance. <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep our distance and, and we are keeping in touch with everybody. We turn this 15 minute live feed into an hour and five minutes. So I'm going to go eat and we're going to now eat our brunch and we're going to, he's going to go do his thing, whatever you have to do. And I'm going to do my thing in the garden and probably have to fill hummingbird feeders behind me. Isn't this cute? I got that at Goodwill for like $2. I was so excited. It was broke, but I fixed it up. It's just the stained glass hummingbird thing. I was going to hang it in the window, but the whole thing is so blessed heavy. I figured I would just hang it on the wall. Um, that's it. I can't think of anything else. No, that's it. For me, anyway. Well, yeah, you have, they want to hear you. Yeah, I know that. Come on, Gary, talk. Get him tired. If you get him really tired, I saw him one day. It was just, and I thought, what the heck is going on? He was sitting there. It was so funny. He was just talking. And, talking. and then I found, I found out if he gets really tired and he loses his wits, he literally will talk more than me. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But like, see, now I should have put him on yesterday because last night he said he got a good, his first good night's sleep. I hadn't slept for days either. I was getting up every hour on the hour. I went and looked out the window. I... I went and filled the hummingbird feeders at three o'clock in the morning. I made hummingbird food. Last night I got four hours of sleep and then I woke up and then I actually made hummingbird food and then I did fall asleep for another couple hours. So I finally got some sleep. It's like I said, I think we're all going through it different ways and we're, and we have to react. We can't all be hyped up and stressed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I think what's going to happen is it's a new norm. And I, no, no, it's not a new norm. I don't want to say that. It's now. It's just in the moment. This is what's going on. I think it's going to go back. And we just have to get used to our situation right now. And then we'll see what happens. I mean, there's a lot of people, even my grandson, we normally have a birthday party here in the beginning of April. He's not going to have a birthday party. He was supposed to graduate with big graduation junior highs. But, They've omitted that. So a lot of people are going through different things, including kids. I know what my neighbor is going to do for my um, grandson. So I, I don't want to say in case my daughter is watching. He told me what he's going to do. We'll talk about it later. But he wants to do something and because he lives in on the same block. So, you know, we have to do what we have to do. And let's do our screaming and yelling and then pull ourselves together and just go for it. And at that point, if you can laugh, if you can eat something, even if it's microgreens, Dr. Perlmutter said we can raise our immune system. And Dr. Oz, if I'm not like the biggest fan of Dr. Oz, watching him on TV or anything. I do watch him once in a while, but I do believe he said two things. He would like to see us all get natural vitamin D. I got two days of that, maybe. And he would like to see people eat like an orange twice a day because he wants people to have more, uh, vitamin C twice a day. And then Dr. Perlmutter, David Perlmutter, I know I've said this earlier, he wants us all to have something that's been grown so you get the enzymes and all the benefits of live food. And it doesn't have to be a lot. And don't worry about organic at this point. Whatever you've got is going to be fine. Anything else? No. I don't want somebody saying, oh, poor Gary stood off to the side while Robbie talked and he had so much to say. So let's Where go. Was that? Nobody said it yet, but I'm waiting for it. That was the other day. Someone's meant, yeah. Uh, Mary can't get any canned fruits here in Kansas City. You will. Stay calm, and I think you will. 
Yes. I think you will. Yeah, right now it's a supply chain issue where the orders that they normally get are coming in and there's just people have been cleaning them out. So it'll take a while. But the canned food I'm not concerned about is that much because it will eventually get back. Um, Pamela. Pamela Andre. Yeah, she said you're going to be famous for your Christmas lights. I did that the moment this all started. I think everybody should put out Christmas lights to bring a little color. I've got Christmas lights. Actually, I was looking at them last night when I woke up and then went back to sleep. Um, it's not that it has to be Christmas lights, but, you know, that's a happy time. Kids like to see lights. And you know what? If everybody started setting up Christmas, I never even thought about it. They're not allowed to go out. And they can't go play with their friends. But if the family did get in the car and did cruise around, they'd be able to get the kids out. I know my grandkids love to see Christmas lights. My daughter gets them in the car. My daughter and my son-in-law, they go driving around to see Christmas lights. Can you imagine the joy that some of these kids that are locked up all day will get to just be able to get out fresh air? Even nighttime, it's still fresh air. And drive around and see Christmas lights? I think we do. I, I put it on my Instagram account. And let me say, I'm really bad at that, so I rarely put things up, but I did put the the Christmas lights on there, and even I'm slow on Facebook because I'm trying to concentrate on YouTube. I think any little thing that can bring a smile to someone's face, you know, that will bring our spirits up so we can keep our immune system up. You know, I mean, think about it. There are some people that are getting the virus that don't even know they're getting it. So that's why you want to keep your immune system up. So if, God forbid, you do or you did contract it, that if you do get it while we're all in quarantine, you'll build, build up some sort of immunity because you may not even know you got it. Um, so th this is what the thing is. We want to be able to get some sort of live nutrients in you, whether you garden in your yard, a patio, or even grow microgreens on your counter to get some nutrients in you, try to keep your spirits up, Keep the vitamin D and the vitamin C up and don't overdo it. You just need a little vitamin C and vitamin D. Hopefully when the sun is out, you can get out there and take a walk. And that's it. That's all we can do. But th that's basically it. And that's what I'm trying to do. And Terry is just chilling from home in Minnesota. She's a, I'm a prepper governor. I'm a prepper. Oh, governor said I had to close, close. I'm, I'm self-employed. I, it will be over soon. Yeah, we're self-employed too. So we're not working. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're not doing, we're, you know, we're all, we're all in the same boat. It doesn't mean you can't go and just scream and get it out and then go on your merry way. We have the right to vent and we have the right to get it out. And if you keep it sometimes too bottled up, it can be worse. So I think call a friend, vent and be angry what's going on and you know nobody has control over this and then take a deep breath and then go do something and you might find there's things you like to do that you haven't had time to do say yeah. something no that, i'm just <laughs> reading as You're, it scrolls down I... oh she pamela she's getting her pole beans there's something green beans boy they grow quick I just had some green beans in my garden and they just took off and then I keep pulling every day. That's what was in my mashed potatoes I made. I only put a few of them in there, but I couldn't believe how quick they come up and they immediately start throwing green beans. So green beans, very good. Pole beans, your beans grow really, really quick. It's amazing how quick yeah, they grow. If, if I'm correct, I think Pamela's in central California. And, I and, and as, the, as we move into spring, and the season starts to kick in. Yeah, if you can start to prepare some of the things that you're going to plant now, you know, now would be the time to sort of maybe start a few things indoors. And that'll take your mind off what might be going on too. It'll, you know, everyone needs some place where you can step away from. Yeah, even from even it. in the house, this is Swiss chart. Sissy wants you to get in there, say something. Who? Sissy? S oh, Sissy Brown? No, she said you're a breath. No, but she also said get in there. Oh, right? oh, yeah. Yeah, but you can start things if you're not in the garden scene, season yet. I, I know I've got a video and do it whatever way you want. I've got them see in a plastic bags in a pot. 
and this can go soon into the yard i don't, this is you probably are if you have or have not seen the video this comes right off really really easy i did a whole video on that and you can start a lot of stuff indoors now even this even though i started this indoors i can start taking these leaves off all i have to do is leave a few in the center that's all i have to do and i could add this to something and this to something and you know every little bit helps so get your seeds started if you've got the seeds um test a few beans overnight ask robbie and gary test a few beans overnight if they sprout you're good to go also you can get a lot of stuff growing i was gonna grab my water um you can get a lot of stuff growing if you have someplace warm you know so that will anything will grow if you have someplace warm it's got to be a little cooler than a heat pad but you could use a heat pad and put something on top of a heat pad uh, maybe a towel or something and start putting your pots on there that little bit of warmth tricks them and you could start growing a lot of stuff indoors if you can't get a grow pad some people i think the morning gardener did something on a grow pad i think he bought one at walmart or something i don't know what you can get right now as far as that i did put an order in for some potting soil just to have and i never got it so if you had a heat pad you don't have to run it 24 7 but you could run it even at night and put some pots on top of a heat pad and like i said you don't want to cook your plants you might want to put a towel and that would give a little warmth to the soil and they'll take off you just want to get them a, you want to pull them like some people will start their seeds or do things on top of a, of a refrigerator that little you know because the refrigerator sends warmth up so that little bit of warmth can get a lot of things growing pamela's waving back to you oh, yeah. <laughs> um what else uh, I think that's basically it. What size containers do you grow zucchini in? I have grown them. Gee, are they 18 gallons? I think that. Or but night, you know what? If you're composting in place, you can use a big flower pot. They'll grow. So you, it doesn't matter. But I was using those tubs that you can get from Home Depot, Lowell's, Target, Walmart. If you don't have them, um, if you... I jump and you've taken trash cans and cut them in half and made flower beds out of them. But if the more the, what the whole idea with zucchini is and squash is these these plants are heavy feeders. So if you're going to compost and place there, you can get a lot of stuff growing and it doesn't have to be big containers. If you are looking for food that's fast, then at that point you want to get your kale and your greens and and green beans and different things like that. I find for myself, peas are more fragile and green beans for me just take off. You have to grow what go, grows best for you. Like here, the romaine lettuce, it self seeds itself everywhere. That's why I'm only going to grow romaine lettuce. I'm not going to go out there and fight with other lettuce when the romaine wants to reseed itself and I can separate it. Yeah, if you try a lot of different things and something works really well, um, the way I look at it, I don't really grow I try not to grow plants that I have to work hard to grow. So if they, your neighbor might be able to grow spinach really well and you might be struggling with it, but you might be able to find something that's an alternative that does better in your garden. So I, I say work with what, what, yeah, what works for you and run, run with it. Try a lot of different things. Maybe I should get something to eat. <laughs> You want us to go? <laughs> I don't know what okay, to yeah, say. Yes, Central California. That's that's. What yeah, I'm you saying. have to work with what works good in your garden. Of course, if you're just starting, you don't know yet. So you try a bunch of different things, and you'll know. You'll know the first season. And even tomatoes, the the ones that reseed itself, are usually the ones that do really really good. But you you try different things. Don't concentrate on one type, a specific variety of plant. You want to try a few different types because one might work better than another. Yeah, I'm trying to get to Marty. Marty, Marty's, can you sit down and answer? Marty's first comment about dried beans. I eat a lot of dried beans and and rice because I need a lot of calories. So yeah, the dried beans, yeah, they will sprout, and you, they're probably more nutritious if you sprout them and cook them. But yeah, they're 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 easy. Do I eat to while you cook, or no? Oh, I don't know if that's rude or not. Is it rude? 
uh, and also Marty, yeah, replant the onion tops, carrot tops, and celery roots. Yes. And I think cabbage. We've done. Have we tried cabbage? Yes, I did cabbage, and I don't know if I'll do it this year. I might. Um, with cabbage, what you can do is, as the head comes up, if you take the head out when it gets about that big and you use it it will start sprouting a whole bunch of little heads yeah, so yeah. you can use it right away but if you want a big head of cabbage you can actually start taking the outside leaves and then leave the head so it's whatever way you want to do it broccoli same thing with broccoli and then i'll let them talk if you're growing straight broccoli and you're waiting for a big head but you want to eat now you can either use the leaves or if you chop off the head like i did last night um, let's say it's about that big, it will start to shoot out a bunch of small spears. So if you're in a hurry, a lot of these plants can be used right away. Now you can talk. Yeah, with cabbage. Oh, this is good. Yeah, this is good. I haven't made this before. With cabbage, yeah, you, you don't have to harvest the whole plant. You just harvest the head and leave the root, and then you'll get a second harvest out of it. Same thing with celery. And celery? celery comes back after it goes to seed it will come back from the base so don't pull it out if you don't want to yeah once you start with celery it'll self seed and that will just you know you'll never have to plant it again we're eating our, our, this is our, breakfast, our breakfast that we were supposed to eat an hour ago and maybe you can explain what it what it is it's well it's leftovers from dinner that have been cooked into a, a patty or it's it's not a souffle it's almost like a um like an omelet but it's potatoes yeah it's mashed potatoes leftover mashed potatoes with eggs and Green. grains from the garden topped with a little bit of cheese No, Ma Marty, I haven't grown dried beans for storage, but I'm thinking I should because they do pretty well here. I got some dried beans from one of our friends, a neighbor, and we never planted them, I don't think, from Crystal. No, you, you put them in an envelope somewhere. We'll have to see. Right now, I want to grow food. See, I mean, I'm hoping this, whatever, everything going on, maybe I'll only be a month or two. I don't know. But in the meantime, I want to grow food that I can store. Like you said, you want to go get more pumpkins growing. Yeah, this year I'm going to squash. get a lot more pumpkins growing. I had kabucha. kabucha. Yeah, we had kabucha. Yeah, kabucha pumpkins growing in one spot under an avocado tree for three or four years. It would, I would leave a fruit there. And it would self seed the following year. But last year, it, something happened to the plant and I didn't replant it. But yeah, this year I want to set up a lot more squash, storage pumpkins, that sort of thing. We grow a lot of zucchini, but storage pumpkins, winter, winter squash. I'm trying to think what you call them here. Pumpkins. I don't know what you're trying to ask me. Well, well, pumpkins that you grow to store for winter. Well, David Good calls everything squash, basically, right? Pumpkins. Well, yeah. I don't know because look at this. This has been sitting on the counter for a while, and this is still good. That's why I like squash because I know I can pick it and let it just sit. And now I can either, if it gets too hard and you can't peel it, like my daughter said they couldn't peel it, I could just take this whole thing, scrub it up, put it in a pot, with some water, about that much water, and boil it for half hour to an hour till you can get it fork soft, cut it open, take the seeds out, and then take out all the flesh out of it. So there's a lot of different ways to store this stuff or bake it. You could put it in on just a roasting pan and bake it and then get into it because they're too hard sometimes to even cut, but they still taste good. Is that what the question was on um, pumpkins? Uh, zucchini and zucchini, it seems like everything else is pumpkins. But is that what you're asking? I, no, I've, I, I keep reading. Um... Keep reading. Yeah, we do freeze a lot of our food. More, we, Robbie got her de dehydrator out. We're starting to think about dehydrating more food, but we do freeze a lot. I want to dehydrate. We have a lot of um, tree collard. 
So I want to dehydrate greens and maybe make a green powder out of the tree collard. And I, I have dehydrated ginger or something. Oh, it's the garlic chives because I can't, I couldn't get garlic ordered. And I probably could go to the store and buy it. But I figured if I took the garlic chives, the greens, and dehydrate it, make a green powder out of it, and put it on food, it should be just as good as using garlic. My garlic didn't grow that good. It still have garlic out there, but it just didn't grow that good. But I didn't buy it through a seed company. I got it from the grocery store, so I don't know if it was an inhibitor in it or what on that. What are you gonna say? Yeah, I I froze four or five gallon buckets of mandarins. Oh my gosh. When was that? Oh my God. Earlier on in the week, four or five gallon buckets of mandarins. I just simply peeled the mandarins, rinsed them, put them in Ziploc bags and froze them. And even if we don't use them now, we'll have those for summer when the maybe we won't have mandarins, but we've got a lot of citrus anyway. But they would be good for smoothies. Anything, you know, I'll make. I'll start making. If I have to, if we're stuck in the house, I'll make orange ice cream. I've made ice cream from home, so and use different things to make ice cream. So, I call it ice cream. It's more of a sherbet, but um, yeah. I'll, can you imagine five gallon? I did half of one. I can believe how long it took me. You peeled some, and some of them I told you just don't peel them. Well, uh, the way I'm doing it, I'll throw it in the blender, skin and all, because skin's got vitamins. Yeah. As far as M Marty planting the ends of kitchen veggies i've planted i haven't done it yes i did i'm trying to think beets are a good one that i've had a lot of success with like the beet tops i'll just cut the greens off them and plant plant the top back in and usually they'll grow two or three beets they'll be smaller but they'll grow back two or three beets the, there's a lot of root vegetables that will grow back. That's the ones I like. And, of course, celery will do that. I'm afraid to give them the dog's right. I'm afraid to give them. And what does Kitty go do? She loves garlic chives, and yet I don't want her eating it. And she Here, this was more potato than anything else. Who got it? Jack or Kitty? Okay. Anything else? I can sign off because I'm about now. I've eaten. Now I can go outside and go in the yard. Yep. Paolo can tell. Uh, please read. Tell Robbie I have learnt so much about hummingbirds from her. Oh, thank you. Thank you for you because this way yep. you're taking care of the hummingbirds there too. I'll see if I, I'll come on one day the way I do the oranges. We had a lot of trees that had a lot of oranges. And so that's why I said I make it differently than probably a lot of people do. So I'll get that on one day. I'll probably do it, do it live. Um, it's not just us. A lot of the whole area, because of all the rain we had last year, all these oranges produced, uh, orange trees produced a lot of fruit. And you, we, don't, we don't want a single one to go to waste. So we've been really working with that. I'm yeah. trying not to let food go to waste this year. Nothing goes to waste. It goes in the compost, but I'm trying to see if we can eat most of it or have it to eat. Okay. Say something. You've, no, got, you've got the mic in the yeah, chair. Yeah, I know that. I've got the mic in the chair and I'm closer to the screen, actually. So, Hoppy Bob Summers turned his wood chips today. Yeah, I, if you turn them, they'll break down faster. Um, I don't, I don't turn mine. I, I don't need to water them right now. So mine break down pretty slowly. Yeah, there's a lot of different techniques you can use to speed the process up and turning them is one, one way. And if you want to break, get them to break down even faster you could add extra green yard waste into it and that will give it a little bit more nitrogen and help break it down a little you know if you want to use i i was going to do a video I, I didn't do it uh you could take wood chips and put it in a bucket and water it and then keep it damp just keep watering it just set it aside somewhere and you can go back in a couple weeks 
it'd be good if you can get some collard leaves or something in there. It's amazing as you start to push the wood chips in a bucket, underneath looks like potting soil. And it's just, you saw what I showed you on the deck. It just yeah. was, it broke down so quickly by having it in a bucket out in the open, but keeping it wet like you would uh, to water a plant. So the underneath, when you took the top off, was just ready to grow and it was just all fine, fine um, growing medium, really. I would like to push, yeah. do that do that more and maybe push some old collard leaves and cabbage or not, not, what am I trying to say, kale, anything, because the leaves will really bring in more microbes and then it will even break it down quicker. But it was a matter of, I only had it out there for like two weeks and I went to do something with it. And then all of a sudden it was all broke down. It was just beautiful, just regular wood chips. Go ahead, I, you, I can't, yeah. you're sitting in front of it. So yeah, um, yeah, Pamela, let's, I would describe it as a potato cake, what we had for breakfast. Yeah, that's a good way. It was not letting the potatoes go to waste. Well, it wouldn't have gone to waste. We would have had it for dinner, but in the meantime, it's breakfast. It's got, I, I ended up putting three eggs in it. I am trying to ration the eggs a little bit right now because I can't get eggs either. Um, I think we have one dozen left, but I want to bake some cookies or something. I, I haven't been in the mood for anything sweet, but I'm going to have to, I want to bake, some, I want to bake some stuff and I can't think of anything else yeah. really. So I wanted to have, make sure I had breakfast. Cause I know that sometimes I do myself forget to eat. He doesn't forget, but then he'll just go look and look. And this way I wanted to make sure he had something to eat. Can't think of anything. Yeah. No, we, we, uh, Tammy, no, we don't can, um, but that juice sounds good. In Australia, I used to make my own tomato sauce or ketchup and I grew up can canning. My family were big on canning. We'd go to the uh, we'd go to the orchards and we'd pick cherries and peaches and bring them home and can them. We did a lot of canning growing up. What's local eggs? Somebody, liquid say? eggs. What about liquid eggs? I haven't looked for them yet, so we'll see what I have to look for soon. Right now, I'm not. I'm not worried. I I've noticed that the some of the, like I said, Target's starting to deliver again, and Whole Foods, which is Amazon, um, he's trying to hire more drivers, but they still need the product first. So I think I think the panic shopping is over. The big big panic shopping is over. I that went on for quite a few days. They were just buying most anything. And then as that slows down, then they'll be able to stock their shelves. So I'm pretty sure we'll get something. I'm not that worried. If I worry about anything, I worry about sugar, but I'm good on sugar. Otherwise, I'd, otherwise you'd see me totally freaked out if I didn't have any sugar. So that we'll find the eggs and we'll figure it out. And Gary used to go, when we you went to the store to buy eggs, you used to run to the post office and, and then you bring home from that store, the eggs were cheap, like six do dozen if they let go. So we are, that's why we have eggs. Yeah. Because you you always go in there and buy a whole bunch when you, whenever you go before this issue. So I've always been somebody that bought stuff and to have extra. Just, and then every cold, after I had a really bad flu, before we start gardening, gosh, you said it was about eight years ago. We had, we were both really sick with the flu. Do you remember how, whatever yeah. it was? After being so sick, both of us at the same time, that's when every year, come winter, I would make sure I had cough medicine, uh, Tylenol, and or whatever I wanted to have in the house, and buy, buy up of maybe 10, 15, 20 cans of soup and have some juice here. Because when you're sick, you're not in the mood to go into a, well, we didn't have a garden then, but I know you're not in the mood to go in the garden or look around. You want to be able to just walk to your kitchen, open something up and go back to bed or the couch or wherever you are. So I started that habit. And thank goodness, we never used it for that, but we had it for other things. So I think that's why we were prepared because it's just a habit I start more so if we're sick, you don't want to, you're not going to go to the store when you're sick. You don't even feel like, you don't even feel like going to the doctor when you're sick. So I kind of started that thing and that that's worked out really, really good. So I can't think of anything else either. Can you? 
No, I'm, I'm still trying to read some of the comments. Kansas, Marty lives in Kansas City and there's very little fresh there. And further down, he said, mentioned cans. You got canned soups, tuna, salmon, etc. Perfect. And that's good for a base. And then if you can, I'm not sure the weather conditions in Kansas City, whether it would be gardening, whether you can garden yet, there might be something you can grow. But once you have a base, a can as a base, then you can start adding things oh. from your garden. Tuna, nutrition. Salmon. You can shred up greens if you if you've got a garden. You can take a chopper or something and shred up some greens, and you can mix a tuna can in there. And then you can mix in an egg if you've got eggs, one or two eggs. You want to make it a little bit thinner. You can even add a little milk or something if you've got. If you don't have milk, you can use powdered milk or nothing or mayonnaise. Sometimes you can substitute mayonnaise if you've got real mayonnaise instead of eggs. So if you, and then you can mix it all up with the tuna, add in if you've got any type of flour. I think if worst came to worst at this point, if I only had oatmeal, I'd use oatmeal, but any type of flour. And you can end up frying up beautiful fish patties out of that. So there's a lot you can do with that little can. And that's why cans to me were important to always have some tuna. I don't think I have any salmon. I got fresh salmon, it's frozen. So there's a lot you can do with one can. You think, well, you're gonna sit down and eat can. No, you're gonna make a whole meal out of it. And, Fish patties fried up, it's so good. And I'm not talking about deep frying. I mean, just coating your frying pan a little bit with a little oil. And that's something my mother used to make, tuna patties. So, but I add in a lot of greens. She used to make, my mother makes, I think she still does make tuna patties and spinach patties. Well, you can mix it. You have spinach and tuna together. And so now you can mix it. And you make a whole meal out of it. What are you laughing about? Uh, someone mentioned bit big Big Bad John, I've been stealing toilet paper from people's homes. You could talk about that. Oh, I don't online. have my computer open, but I love what he wrote. Yeah. He wrote, he was like, all you scumbags out there, you had no right to go get toilet paper. I, he said, you're all a bunch of dirt bags, and I dare you to, to TP my house now. Go ahead. I <laughs> dare you to. I love that, the way he wrote it out yeah. in the big block, and I, I had tagged that because that was funny. Hopefully that. That was quoting him. That's not how Robbie talks. No, that but. was so funny. I thought I tagged that, and then some other people went ahead and, and were laughing about that. That was good. I see this guy pop up sometimes on the internet writing things, and that was really good. So, yeah, nobody's TPing houses right now. You know, toilet paper, you might be able to trade somebody if you have toilet paper. I heard they're stealing out of um, parks and stuff. Well, parks are closed now, but public restrooms yeah. they were taking. We're okay on toilet paper. Uh, we were okay before this happened because we always make sure in case we can't get to the store or there's an earthquake. Or there's an earthquake. We're always prepared because when there's an earthquake, things can happen. And that's why I think a lot of people out here ran for water because when there's an earthquake, things get shook up and then the water turns brown out of your tap. And then they tell you, don't drink it. You have to boil it. So people ran for water and the toilet paper too, in case in case people run out. So we're always prepared to a certain point. Yeah. And years ago, our electricity went off for what, three? Like, was, yeah, three th days. Three days. And when the electricity goes down, the stores can't process the sales. So the stores can't sell you anything and they can't manually do it. It has to go through their, their register, which is an electric register. So we've always been a little prepared for something to happen. So we kind of live with um, the thought of what do we need in a couple of weeks from now? Well, we, yeah, in case something happens, I always think if, if one of us got sick or both of us got sick, we wanna make sure we have something here. We may not feel like going out in the garden and eating kale. <laughs> I may want something simple just to open up. You can keep answering. We're gonna, we're gonna I'm gonna sign off because I want to get out in this yard and I want to get some stuff done today and tomorrow before the rain comes in because they're saying all week. I hope they're wrong, but they're saying all week raining and it's been pouring off and on. We're growing time. Um, oh, yeah, we got time. You've got on. time in your back room. I split yeah. off the, I bought, thank goodness, before all this, I bought time. 
and I split it immediately. I took a little piece off and I put it in a flower pot and uh, he put it in his back room that he set up as a garden and that one's growing and the one on my deck is growing. I grow thyme, sage, oregano, rosemary. I think I'm missing something. Thyme, sage, basil. Except my basil, I, I'm the only basil I've got growing right now is in the house. I've got some of them growing. Isn't that beautiful? I've got, I have it growing in the window right now because it's too cold. Any of them I put outside seem to die back. This is purple basil. This is just seed from off of mine because I make a pizza and he likes the pizza. And that's a unique pizza. So yes, we're growing that. And it, basil can be grown in the window. I mean, this is, this is proof. It's growing in the window and it's in the plastic bag the way I do it because I want to get it outside. So I want to slip it out of the plastic bag. It's just growing in my candy cup. That's just one. I've got more. I've got more growing. Go ahead. What are you laughing about? Uh, Kevin, my wife told me I was being immature. I told her to get out of my fort. So he's, he's built a bunker like a fort, <laughs> I guess. And she thought it was crazy or whatever. That's um, funny. That's cute. Yeah, that's... Levon, what I'm drinking here is my stinging nettle tea that I I drink every day pretty much for my arthritis. And I do put thyme in sometimes, but I definitely put in chocolate mint. Look at me, I don't know what you put in. No, we're, oh. we're growing chocolate mint mostly. You, yeah, you took the chocolate mint off Which the is deck. similar to peppermint. Chocolate mint and pepper, peppermint are really close, but chocolate does have the essence of chocolate. But yes, you took chocolate mint the yeah. other day. And we, we do have both. I have a little bit of orange mint growing, and I was going to cut back on the orange. But with everything going on, I think I'm going to grow more orange because I actually like that if we get our eggs going uh, in scrambled eggs and different things. I'm not, I don't bother with the strawberry mint. I have it out there. But yes, is that what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, look. Lebon was talking too. about putting thyme in in a tea with peppermint. Oh, I haven't so, tried that. Have you? Yeah, I put thyme in my. You're pepper. taking from my thyme. Just a little bit. <laughs> I, I like to put a little bit of everything in, not a lot of everything, just little pieces. So. And that, yeah, it is. It is a good time to start thinking about growing as much as you can. And then whatever you don't use, it's really easy to wash up and freeze. And you have it for an I froze mint, but you can freeze things, you can dry things. And I'm I'm not in the canning. I think I canned once a long, long time ago. It's too much work for me. So if but if you're in the canning, absolutely. My my girlfriend, Stephen Cynthia, they canned once. Their whole, all their their peaches or nectarines. At that time, I heard it was like, yeah. oh my gosh, that was a lot of work. But yes, if you can can, there's that's wonderful. But you can freeze a lot of things. I would think about that. So a lot of excess stuff, I probably will be freezing um, and drying. I want to really try the garlic chives and free and dry that, and make a powder out of it, and see if that's. I mean, that would even be just as good as regular garlic because it is garlic. You're just using the green part because it's a garlic type of garlic and it grows more green than a bowl. Right, Jack? Right, Jack? Go ahead, answer. They want to hear you. They don't yeah, want to hear me. I, I should that. leave the room. I should leave the room and leave you with Gary for an hour. Uh, Levon. Yes, thank you. I got the idea to freeze mint from you, and she loves it. Yes, it's so easy to freeze mint. We do have spearmint. Do you put that in your tea too? Yes, I do. When 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 I've got it, spearmint, I, I will put. I really like spearmint. Oh, uh, good. Because right, it, right now, I go ahead. Where is it? I. What do you mean the whole ground in the, oh, like, on the ground? That's yeah. all. Some of those leaves I couldn't believe were so big by the water fountains that it never died back this winter. Okay. It took off. I was thinking of pulling a lot of it out, but now I like spearmint with lemon verbena, and the lemon verbena finally died back. It's a bush, and now it's coming back, and that's really good with stevia. But you'll okay. take spearmint straight, yeah. and it's all over the place. And the I know you can't recognize it because they usually have a little leaf. That's smaller than your thumb, and some of the leaves were huge on it, so that's why it looks different. 
I had a spearmint all over. The um, yeah, the reason I'm using chocolate mint a lot now is one of my wicking bed ponds has got chocolate mint set up in it. But now Robbie tells me that what's on the ground in her garden is spearmint. I'm going to set up another wicking bed pond with spearmint. Why don't you don't need it. Okay, maybe I don't need it. I don't know. I, don't I mean, it's up to you if you want to waste your time with that. That thing is running wild all over through the garden. Okay, then I but won't that, bother with it. No, that. I don't want to stop you no, from doing it. No, I mean. But I would, it, do one with peppermint. We yeah, don't have that know, much peppermint. Okay, if we don't have much peppermint, I'll do it with peppermint. Yeah, I would say because the spearmint, you're going to have, you couldn't kill the stuff. It's all over the place. And it's growing really good. And I'm not, I'm going to cut it back, but not as bad. If you've only got one, I would say go with it. I want you to grow what you want. Right? Okay. No, okay. Don't mix your mints. Don't mix, if you're going to grow it in containers or don't mix them because they kind of take on the taste of both and then you get something really odd. And don't try to grow the seeds unless you have no choice. Because see, the seeds kind of revert back to a wild mint, and I won't eat it. I asked you if you would eat it. You didn't want to eat it, so we ended up pulling all that out. You want to do cuttings off of mint. But no, if you want to do spearmint, I'm just saying it's in half my yard right now. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll go Peppermint with... would be good. I really like peppermint. Yeah. Peppermint's really strong, a little stronger than chocolate mint, and it smells so good. That's the one that we really should get a lot going. That's my. That would be my choice. You don't like mint. That's Jack. Yeah, the wicking ponds really contain the mint. The, if you're worried about mint spreading, that's why I think I'll grow more in the wicking ponds because, you know, they're not going to send their runners through the water because I've got that mode around it and I've got it well contained and I can grow as much as I need. Uh, yeah, Ke Kevin is a bit of a joke she, he's telling kind of jokes that's what i was laughing about a minute ago yes, i think we should go in our garden so i'm gonna go and the sun came out again yay sun it's so quiet though usually it's so noisy and you hear things but you don't hear a lot does does the mint have vitamin c do you know the vitamins in mint? You know, I did, and I can't remember, but the mint's got a lot in it, a lot of vitamins in it. I will have to reach, remember, look it up or, or, yeah. or watch one of my old videos because I went over on that. I believe it does, um, and many nutrients. That's why mint is so good for you. I do. I think it does. A lot of your green leafy vegetables have vitamin C in it, and that's an herb, but it's still, it's so good. I got to make more today because I used the last ice cube. And I don't think one mint is that much different than another. It's it's basically by taste what you like to drink. I like the strawberry mint. Was, uh, that was the worst <laughs> mint to drink. It smells good. I mean, if you want to put it on a path where you're walking and you step on it, it smells like strawberries. But to me, I couldn't do anything with that taste. Nikki, Monica, uh, milligrams of vitamin C in mint. He's got it? Uh, I, I may have it. He's looking it up. One milligram? What is it? Yeah, one milligram of vitamin C in mint. In how much mint, though? Is that like a teaspoon? Yeah, uh, let's see. 1% per two. So it's not overloaded. 1% per two teaspoons. Uh, tablespoons. One one percent per two tablespoons. So it's got a very small amount. Yeah. Okay. But which is which no, is no, good. Okay. You know, I... you, if you eat a variety of things, you'll accumulate it. Actually, I do have to go. I've got some stuff I've got to do. Yeah, I've got to keep me. All right. Too, so. so, Jack. Oh. All right, so we're going to go for now. I've got stuff I have to do. I think I even have a mail pickup I've got to do. forgot about that. And um, I'll try, we'll, we'll try to come back more often, even if it's just to socialize, because, you know, we're not going out there to see anybody. And this is a good way of doing it. Let's see, for two tablespoons of mint. Okay, it's two tablespoons of mint. So it is a low amount of vitamin C. 
That's I that I wasn't sure how much, but it doesn't matter. Everything, any little bit counts. It's one uh, milligram of vitamin C in the mint to two tablespoons. Okay, a few people are coming in. It's basically you want to get the enzymes and all that from fresh food. You want to get something fresh in you. It tastes good too. Plus, plus we're drinking tap water right now, and I'm putting it through my Brita, and I'm even boiling some of it. And so um, we usually buy bottled water from the machine. There's a really good company out here that has a machine, but I don't want, we're not going near that machine. You see all these people, come, first they shut it. They shut the machine down. It was roped off. Then they turned it back on and you've got all these people there. And uh, it, you know what, it, at this point, we'll, we'll worry about water later. We'll drink from our tap. The other thing I'm doing, and it's, I, I don't even know. I'm just doing it for, let's, let's say for fun is any, we have some bottled water left over from a birthday party here from one of the grandkids. And we've been using that in our coffee maker. I've actually cut down the one cup. I usually have maybe two cups a day, but I don't, I don't need that much coffee. I've been drinking tea now. And when he puts that in there, because it's going to, I know our, our tap water is going to destroy the coffee maker because we have hard water. So when he's using that, I told him, take the water bottles, take the water bottles. You can hand me a water bottle. And, um, just an empty one there, so I'll know what I'm talking about. Well, after you after you put it in our coffee maker, refill it with tap water. It can't hurt. I mean, what is it? Gonna, tap water's got all those horrible chemicals and stuff in it that kills all kinds of bacteria. Put it put, and just fill them up and stick it somewhere. I don't care if it's in a closet. I don't care if it's in some place in a room off to the side. It can't hurt. So if something did happen and there was an issue with water, we would have water, whether it be to drink, wash your hands. If you had a lot of water, you can flush the toilet that way. Um, it can't hurt. That's what I'm saying. It can't hurt. And if something, and we all get through this fine and there's tons of water, then we just water plants with it. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt anything. So that's what we're doing right now. And it's just to have, it's just, it's kind of another, I don't even want to use the word precaution, but just just to have. And then when we don't want it anymore, I take them outside and I water my plants with it. And then we turn in the bottles and get our money back. So that's what we're doing right now because we're not going to go recycle either right now. So we might as well just fill it with tap water. Is there, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing. Wrong. And um, just have extra water for whatever reason. It doesn't matter for whatever reason. Um, is it Paulo? Is that how you pronounce it? Paulo. Uh, where do we get our cane sugar from? For honey? I have gotten it from multiple places. I've got it from local grocery stores. Well, all, a lot of my grocery stores, all the different grocery stores. And then the 25 pound bags, I was getting that from Walmart, but they don't have it right now. So Walmart has sugar. It doesn't really matter where you get it from. There's an off brand. It's it, that looks like it looks like Walmart's off brand. But if you look it up and you go into the company name and then research that company you will find that they do cnh domino um, multiple other ones it's the same company they're all it's the same sugar being packed for different stores so as long as it's cane sugar and again let me say this if you can't get cane sugar as long as you can get sugar if it's just white granulated sugar if it just say it says sugar it will be sugar beet yeah, beet sugar beet sugar that yeah. even according to the hummingbird society is perfectly fine if you can't get cane sugar so at this point i'm using only cane sugar but i have used sugar beet beet sugar and that's fine too it'll just say sugar that's when you know it's not cane when it just says sugar it's not cane but it doesn't matter either one is good it breaks down the same sucrose for them so it'll be fine so wherever you can get it from if you can get it that's all you need um you just want to make sure it's granulated sugar no powdered sugar, no brown sugar. Powdered sugar has got corn, uh, corn starch in it. That will that will kill them. They cannot metabolize that. They can't break that down. You don't want brown sugar because you got molasses in there. They can't they cannot process that. And you don't want honey. They can't process that either. There have been research done that they've seen them go on trees and collect sap, but that's them doing it in the wild. They know what they're doing. I would not use anything other than white granulated sugar. And he says, "Thank you. You're welcome." Um, anything else? I know you're anxious to get your stuff done. I'm anxious to get my stuff done. All right. We're going to sign off after two hours of a 15 minute 
live feed. Wow, that's bad. It's been two hours. And I said, we're not going to do this. We need to be in the garden. But I've eaten already. I now rudely ate in front of you all. And you can finish whatever's left. Yeah. I don't eat as much. And hopefully, if I get stir crazy tonight, I might make a cranberry crunch. I'll make some orange juice later because I haven't had any oranges yet. I'll probably just go in the garden and find one off the tree. Um, caught the eye. Is this going up? What? And down. What does that mean? Caught I. Isis? No. I. I S I S. Internationals and caught I S I S going up in Michigan and down. Should we let them go? Caught Isis. I don't know what that means. I don't. I. I don't know what that means. Flowers. If you. You know what? How do you say that name again? I'm really Which good one? at butchering. Palo? Palo? Palo. Palo. That is true. I bought flower seeds before all this. So I want to get some flower seeds going. Um, <clears throat> I really didn't want to do a lot of geraniums because I didn't think they feed out of geraniums. There's really no nectar to speak of, but they actually do go in there and do a lot with the geraniums. So I don't know if there's any pollen that they're collecting or insects. Because there might be tiny insects that go in the in there and they will pick that, that out too. So any flowers right now. But uh, he's right. I want to get my flowers going. And ha Hoppy? Hoppy, Hoppy Bob. Bob. Summer, st uh, stay safe. We're trying. I think most people are going to kill themselves. Think together. <laughs> I don't know. We're so used to it. So it, it's no change for us. Yeah, it's not. We're, we're always. Yeah, it's not much of a change for us. Okay, right. so Magic Mirror Mystery School, that maybe they're mu musicians. musicians okay. Sure. I'm not sure. I yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about their comments. Should we let them go. I don't understand what that is. I didn't see any bad comments come through. Oh, he said great show. It wasn't supposed to be a show. It's supposed to be a visit. We were, I was simply going to come out here, get our breakfast together, whatever we find in the fridge and, and say on, hello and, and get on with our day. Our morning, our morning, our morning. Our morning. Now it's ready for lunch. I'm right. eat lunch. I left you plenty so yep. you can eat it now or later. If you want to eat it now, I'll, or... I'll eat it now. You're going to eat it. Oh, he's hungry. Yeah. It was really good. Mashed potatoes with eggs and greens. It's amazing how good it is. Now, is it good because we were hungry? You know, how many times do you guys, some of you have kids, you, you go over to your friend's house and your kids are eating these cookies. Oh, mom, how come you don't buy that? And, blah, blah, blah. and they go, this is the greatest. You go back, you go to the store, you buy the same blessed of cookies, you bring them home. And it's like, I don't want it. It's amazing how things can taste different for different times. So, no, he, I, I think it was really good. It was good because it was mashed potatoes with greens from the garden, just a couple leaves. It was like two leaves of dinosaur kale, small ones, uh, two leaves of Swiss chard. I had a, a tree color leaf that I shredded up with some onions. I put in some red vein sorrel. Got a lot of that growing this year. Wow. It's coming up everywhere. And I think that was it on the green. Oh, no, no, no. I had the broccoli leaf I put in there because I brought in the small broccoli head and I ended up giving it to Kitty, my Yorkie. Just so you know, he's the one that named her. I would have named her something else. He named her Kitty because she used to climb up on his shoulder and climb around the furniture like a cat. He said she's like a cat. So I ended up giving her the broccoli head because she loves broccoli more than anything. And I shredded up. It was a big leaf, though, off the, um, the broccoli. And that got shredded up and put into the mashed potatoes. It was so good. Salt and pepper. Real simple with the garlic chives because I, I'm running low on garlic. So I just figured I'll use more garlic chives. I've got that. I want to separate that off and get more garlic chives growing. So that was really good. Um, Lavon, uh, let's see. I'm in Iowa. So it's great to talk to you from so far away. Same here. It's great to talk to you. I'll do more of this if you, you like it. My kitchen is open. It's a mess. No, it's actually, it's yeah, <laughs> but anyways, um, I'll do more of this right now because why not? I, it's been, you know, if you're sitting home alone, who knows? I might pop up at midnight or one o'clock in the morning if I decide to go do something in the kitchen. I don't know. But just kind of to keep in touch, emergency alert moms. I am not sure now. You're coming up with all kinds of stuff. 
Okay, uh, private schools. I'm okay. I'm not sure. He, you're writing, but now you're getting past me. I'm not even sure, Magic Mirror, what you're writing. Please help the kids. Uh, hey, Robbie, I like that plaque behind you. Oh, my F sign. Yeah, that's the one that they put in stores <laughs> that's supposed to be an A. And I got that from my brother years and years ago. He used to work at Fox Studio. And um, he didn't work with the movies themselves, but he had an office there. And on his lunch break, his biggest joy and thrill was to go down and eat lunch and hang out on the set just watching. And I guess somebody gave it to him. And yeah, here in California. Yeah. And restaurants are graded. Oh, oh, it's not graded in the, oh, throughout the U.S.? I'm not sure. Yeah, here in California, they rate, they, they do it, I think, in Vegas, too, in Nevada. They rate the restaurants, and they're actually rating stores now, too, so they'll have the sign. So he brought it uh, from the studio, and I doctored it up, and I made it, and it's laminated, and I stuck it there. Uh, White Flowers Homestead. Hey, I know we've missed a ton of you. At least maybe I have. Um, you know, I'm going to have to go back Magic Mirror and read what you're reading because I'm uh, writing because it's so much and I don't know. Let's make it viral. What your emergency alert moms, please help the kids. Help the kids. Do you know how many moms are writing online? They're going nuts with their kids home? What? I, I don't know. I, I'd be kept cautious about what he's, Oops, what he's writing. Yeah. Oh, magic is in the wrong scope. Okay, so magic, if you're not being nice, I can delete you. <laughs> so if, let me tell you something. There's a lot of moms and dads going nuts. You've got, like my daughter, you've got, her husband, you know, my son-in-law is now working in the bedroom from home from work because they can't go to the office anymore. And then you've got the kids all there. So you've got the whole family now cooped in the house, which is good. He, I heard he gets out and takes a walk. Yes, he wants me to read it later. When I will read it. I will read it. Um, so it, it, see, the... This is going to be a, a lot different for a lot of people. Gary and I are home most of the time. He sometimes has to go do his work. But in general, we're, we're actually somewhere on the property at the same time. So to me, that part is not out of the norm. I mean, that's normal for us. So then you've got people that are dealing with having spouses home. They're both home. One's working, both working. You've got kids. Uh, my daughter's trying to get this online school thing to... I may, I'm, I'm going to have to make hummingbird food, hummingbird food too, so I hope there's enough water in there. Uh, then you've got my daughter trying to get the online school going, and, and you've got two different grades going, and they, they have to alternate. So you, I can imagine. I, I, I can imagine how crazy this is going to be. But, you know, you have to get together. I heard, What I heard somebody say, somebody made a comment the other day. I don't know if it was on the news or something. I heard people have to eat kitchen food now. <laughs> like they don't know what kitchen food is they were going nuts because they were going to close all the restaurants so this way now they go and they buy their takeout but they don't know what kitchen food is that, that was an interesting comment kitchen food um i always cook we used to eat out a lot you know when gary and i got the flu many years ago we ate out a lot we were going to buffets we were going to restaurants I will tell you, Gary got the flu from the restaurant. We don't know if it was off the menu. We don't know if it was off the table. But we went out for our anniversary. We hadn't gone out for a while. This is years ago. This isn't now. And he ended up with the flu that was going around. I'm going to say it was about seven, eight years ago. And then, of course, from him getting it, I got it. So he got over it before me. So we used to eat out a lot. And um, when we went gluten-free... And, he, and I started cooking more. He happens to like it, so we stopped going out, which saves money, too. So um, eating out of a kitchen isn't unusual. It's actually, it's actually, for us, you know, it's it's normal. And, I mean, we just don't go out a lot anymore, which is probably better. I don't want to ruin any restaurant business because everybody does what they want, want to do. But I like cooking at home. I've always liked cooking. And... I can manage to take whatever I've got and make a meal out of it. And so that's just something I've always done. Your your sisters came over 
from Australia quite a few years ago. And the first thing they did was hit the kitchen, both of them, and they did their own cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, they hit, hit the grocery stores. They went to the grocery store. store and then they came home and they came back here and they just cooked away. So they were both big cooks. Okay, they rate the restaurants in New York too, Sandra said. Yeah, that's what the sign is. It's just a goofy sign. Um, Carol Wheeler, she's from Australia. It's 6.30 in the morning. Here, I love watching your videos. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am going to let you know. I am not going to ignore the elephant in the room. I, I, I talked to my friend last night, too. And I said to him, you know, I don't know what to do. I, do I just go on with my videos as if everything is happy? Or do I address it? And he said he was watching some fish person who pretended nothing was going on. And, and then I started looking and you, you get both sides. Uh, and I thought it's just not my nature to, to ignore what's going on. I, I, don't, I want everybody to be happy as much as we can. And we have to have our good moments and we have to keep our spirits up to keep our immune system up. But I am going to address sometimes my feelings on it. And, um, Basically, that's it. I mean, there's nothing I can do. I could I could go shopping if I wanted to and just say, forget them. I'm going to do what I want. And that would be on my part really stupid. So I will order online and get what I can. I did get two orders before all this started from Walmart. Now they're not filling any orders yet. But, you know, they called me and told me they're going to soon. So we'll see. And like I said earlier, in case anybody's new, uh, my daughter's excited with Target. She got two orders from Target yesterday. You don't get everything, but you get a few things. So, and then she also has Amazon Prime. So she gets from Whole Foods when they've got. I'm going to abide. I, I don't want to, I'm going to say it, but it's not exactly the way I mean it. I'm going to say I'm going to abide by the government rules. But what it is, is I'm abiding really for my common sense. I had pneumonia when I was 19, was never addressed. We never talked about it. I got rid of it. I, you know, I, I went to the hospital. They said it wasn't appendicitis. It was pneumonia and I got over it, but I had an x-ray done, I think 10 years ago at the doctors. I can't remember when. And my doctor said to me, did you know you had pneumonia? And I said, yeah, I was 19. She said, all right, you've got scar tissue on your lung. I said, ah, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect anything. I don't have asthma, knock on wood, anything. But I'm aware of it, so I got the call. You know, you don't go outside. So if I want to go shopping to the grocery stores right now when we are on lockdown in California, on my part, that would just be, to me, stupid. I don't need to go shopping. Gary did some runs this week. Uh, he masked himself up. He wore goggles. I bought these glasses. I don't have any here. It doesn't matter. It's just safety glasses, and they have a little plastic on the side. And... Um, gloves he wore some rubber gloves and that was it he that's the last stuff he's going to do I, I mean why should i go out and risk it if you if there's a lot of people in the stores a lot of people and i just i'm not going to risk it i have no reason to if i had to if i had to go out there and look for sugar maybe i would mask myself up the glasses i know a lot of you're going to come in and say oh it doesn't work you know if you're putting on glasses and these have goggles glass on the side it's more for if you touch your face, the, it's human nature to keep touching your face. So you want to cover your eyes, cover your nose, cover your mouth. Whatever's going around now cannot penetrate your skin. This has to get in to your system through your mouth, your nose, or your eyes. That's not to say you wouldn't end up with something, a virus on your, your hand, and then you rub your nose and get in that way. So it's kind of like if you do do anything, whether you put a bandana on, and glasses, even and reading glasses, sunglasses, just to remember to keep your hands away from your face and wash, wash, wash your hands as much as you can. So no, I'm not going out. What's that rolled netting uh, above you? This is where behind me, I'll turn the camera before I end this, is where the hummingbirds are. We closed the window because Gary said there was a glare on the computer. This is where sometimes I do stuff. There's a table down here and my window's behind me. And I, I, We'll sometimes do stuff here, a, um, a craft or whatever I'm doing, planning or anything, a video here. And the hummingbirds are in the window. I've got a bunch of feeders there. And what I like to do is open the window so you can see them better. And there's two windows. There's another window. I'm trying to stay. There's one window there and one behind me. So I open them both up. So if they do fly in because they like coming in and I don't want them in the house, 
they fly in and they fly out. This netting I set up, I climbed up with, with uh, thumbtacks. I took tool. This is the tool I use in my garden. And this can actually come down. See, I just rolled it up. But I can drop it down and roll it to the ground. And then I can open the windows. I can do whatever I want to do, whether it's a live feed or a video. The hummingbirds, if they do come in here, they zip around and go back out. Otherwise, they're going to go in the house. They're going to look for another door and another window, and I don't want that. So that's what this is for. It's actually not in my way, and I got these big clothespins at the dollar store. So I try to roll it up out of the way. I was going to roll it to the ceiling, but I figured I didn't need to. So see, I rubbed my side of my nose. That's what those glasses and masks are. But that's what this is. It's just that when I open the window and the window is closed, I know if the hummingbirds come in, they're going to go right back out one of the windows because they can't go. They, they don't even go towards the netting. They must see the netting, and then they just turn around and go back. If it's open, they will go and zip around the house. I don't want them in the house, and that's what it is. Great for the garden. Any of the greens, if you've got birds bothering your greens, you can take a little tool, drop it on top, and tie it with string, uh, uh, masking tape, yarn, and that will prevent any birds from eating your greens. That works really. I love my tool. You already know I love, I love my tool. Um, I put my package outside for three days. I opened everything to air it out. Oh, 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 she must have got a delivery. I might have missed it. Yes, we had two deliveries just as this was happening at Walmart before their system crashed and they're not taking deliveries. And we have really not touched it. We've put it aside and then we took something out of it and I wiped it down with them. Um, these alcohol pads my daughter gave me. You want to hand me the box? That that was that's a funny thing. The alcohol pads. I wiped it down and we are letting it sit and it's already been there for over a week. So my daughter goes on the eBay. This is this is funny. And she orders what do you call them? Wee wee pads for her dogs. This is this is two months ago, I guess. She orders wee wee pads. She calls the guy or, or emails him. She says. You sent me, well, how many are in here? You sent me 5,000, whatever it was, alcohol wipes. And these alcohol wipes are 70% alcohol. And I guess it's for if somebody got a shot or something. So she that's the guy. No, you sent me like, I, I can't remember. It's 5,000, 10,000, whatever. Boxes. I mean, not boxes. Pads. So she ended up with thousands and thousands of these things. She gave me a whole case. So the guy said, oh, just keep them. Just keep them. I made a mistake. I don't want him back. She said he must be kicking himself now. And he sent her the weeby pants. He was his mistake, but he told her to keep them. So anyway, she calls me. What the heck am I going to do with all these? I said, you never know. Put it away. And so she gave you, when you went over there, she gave you a whole yeah. case. And uh, now she says, boy, is she using these things now? You took these with you when you went out the other day right yeah. Can you imagine a mistake that turned out to be so great for my my daughter and then for us so i'm um, trying to keep ourselves safe and i don't know if i was answering a question that i forgot about and went on to a different subject but just the the funny little things that happen sometimes when you least expect it see i make my own alcohol and i use a lot of clean that's good um watch the alcohol because who was it? I think it was my brother told me the other day. One of the stores got it in and people were grabbing it and grabbing it. And he looked, it was only 50%. According to the CDC, 50% will not kill the virus. I don't want to disagree. I'm going to say if you had nothing, it's better than nothing because it's got to kill some, especially if it weakens, if it's sitting on a surface. But that's just my opinion. So if you've got it, use it. But according to them, that if you got it on you and you wiped it with that, it wouldn't work. But I would think it would have to weaken as it sits on a surface at some point. So I don't know. I know we don't know. So watch the alcohol you're buying because it's supposed to be at least, is it 65 they said? The, they're recommending between 60 and 70. Okay. And 70 is better. So it, it depends on where you're getting your source from. The other thing, too, is whiskey. Or, uh, oh my gosh, there was right. a grain the grain alcohol, but there was another, it was a 151. That's as strong. Yeah. And people are using that, and that will kill it. I mean, you've seen the old Western movies where the guy gets shot and they pour whiskey all over him or alcohol and they do surgery and pull the bullets out. Well, it's kind of like that. 
So if you had to, if you've got that, and oh, I even looked to see if I had any old bottles we don't drink. But people used to give you stuff, but I couldn't find any. So I don't have any grain alcohol here. No, we don't. No, I thought maybe we did. And I started searching up in the cupboards, but nothing. Nothing. Um, I can't think of anything else. Uh, there's trolls on the loose. Probably so. What is that? I don't know what. Yeah, that one. Yes, I would remove that one. Yeah, there probably is trolls. Um, it's hard to keep up. What I should do is, I have a small still. Oh, cool. Um, that's Carol Wheeler. I should get my granddaughter, since she's not working, Anissa, she's not working right now. She did a little modeling gig before all this that worked out really good. And she's a hairdresser and she's still going to college. I should put her up as a moderator. She told me she would. She said, just let me know. Yeah. And then she can delete all that stuff and I'll give her something different to do. She's got a YouTube channel, but she doesn't really do anything with it because she's doing other things online, trying out um, products, cosmetic products and different things. Yeah, see, need those flu, those alcohol pads for any flu season and hand sign. Yeah, well, I rubbed it all over my hand. I took it with me the other, well, a week ago. I haven't been out for a week. The last time I actually left the property was last Friday. Yeah, last Friday. Not yesterday, but. Not yesterday, last Friday. That was the last outing. We were not on any type of lockdown. I don't even remember what caused that. Why I left. Yeah. Um, what was Friday? What was, oh gosh, time is so something odd. we want to do, yeah. No, but that's when all the mass shopping started. Yeah, we because went, the announcement was made Thursday. That What was the announcement? God, I'm losing track of time. I'm, I'm thinking it was the governor. Was it the governor? That we had this going on? Yeah. And so... I got, picked up a couple little things I wanted during the week, and then we went last Friday. I wanted the eye goggles because they were at the dollar store, that little dollar store. Oh, that's right. So we went for that only, but since uh, one of the local grocery stores had tuna on sale, um, my brother said he was, that's right, he was going to go in the morning, and he. that's why we went out. Yeah, they had a Friday sale. They had a they had a Friday sale. Everything was cheap. Salmon was five dollars a pound, fresh salmon, and and then they had cans of tuna, the solid, not the not the plate, and that was a dollar a can. And my brother said, "I'm going to get up in the morning and go early," and he got up early to the store when they first opened, and he started sending me texts. That's right, last last Friday, not the Friday just passed. There was nothing on the shelves. So when we went from the dollar store to the big grocery store, we were surprised. We're in a smaller town though. They still have, we still got our tuna. Yeah. And I bought salmon. I, I goofed. I wasn't even thinking I went to the butcher and I, I, he, I said to him, how much is it? He says $5 a pound today only. And I, and it, they were busy the store, but the mad rush was just starting. And I said, well, if that, he, I said, what's the limit? He said, 10 pounds. I said, can you cut up 10 pounds into different packages? I saw the bill. I was like, what the heck did I buy? But like my brother said, no, that's good. That's good. So we froze that. So I ended up with a lot of salmon. And that was from chili. That was yeah. from chili. And that's right. Because the butcher said, we yeah, talked to him. We knew him. He's really, really good. Um, yeah, it was the last time I went out. And then we, we drove around. That's when our car broke down. That's right. That, that day our car broke down. And we were stuck out in the rain for an hour. On the way home, a mile from the house. So, um that's basically it. I'm just, that was the last day we went out in, like I said, I'm not going out. I'll keep myself busy in the garden. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And my neighbor told me to come over and see her ponds. I'll, I'll walk over yeah. there one day and see her ponds. And um, they'll be doing different things like that around here. I, I think what bothers me is well, besides everything going on, if I say personal, it would be, you know, my grandson's birthday's coming up. We always have a big birthday party here. He would have had a party here in probably in less than two weeks. So that's not happening. That means the family doesn't get together and the family can't get together. And then I worry, I worry with my parents and you know, well, I worry with everybody, you know, my parents, my brother's family and my sister's family and just everybody. I am friends. I am I can't keep going there because when I go there, I worry and I worry your family. They're going through the same thing in Australia almost. Not, I don't know. We, Leanne 
kind of played it down a little bit, but then I'm not sure because she told me she has to work from home now. Yeah. So, and then you got the other one I was talking to, um, your sister-in-law that wasn't feeling good and she did not get tested and she did not know if she had it. Yeah. So I have not heard back, but she was really sick. She's still posting. So that's a good thing. But she said she didn't know. So they've got it going through there. So it's a worldwide thing. We all have to deal with it. Being in the garden is the best, Carol. You're right. And it's, it's, it's really, it's relaxing. It's fun. You hear the birds singing and the Orioles are coming in males only. And so I really enjoy seeing that and trying to feed the birds. I worry a little bit on that because we like buying good food for the birds. And I don't know what's going to be on that. We still have enough. We don't have to worry yet. Right. Yeah. And so I feel, and I'm not just talking about the hummingbirds. We feed a lot of the wild birds too. And some of those seeds are coming in from Canada. Which and Canada's closed? No, the food items are coming across both, both ways. So ho hopefully, you know, that'll continue. Yeah, I would sort of... Um, Hide that one? Well, yeah, I'd maybe block him, at, you know, remove him from commenting. No, 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 no. Over there, that one. Okay. How about that? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Um, oops. What does that mean? Uh, that one. That. Okay, so we're... Okay, sorry. We had to take something off that did not belong there. Yeah, some... Yeah, video chats do help us stay together, and they do. And I think it helps a lot of different people. So I think we're going to go in the garden. We have now taken our 15-minute 15 15-minute 15 live feed and uh, has turned it now into almost two and a half hours. I yeah. so wanted to be in the garden by now. And maybe I can do some stuff out in the garden. I think I can get my tablet out in the garden on when, when the weather warms up a little bit. Like I said, we've only got two days. They said that's going to be dry. And I want to get into the garden and get that stuff done. She was geared up in February. Yeah, sorry to hear, hear that. Oh, what happened? I was geared up to start my garden and then had to have a major surgery. Yeah. I took out half my what right mm -hmm. lung mm. Yeah. you know what though you've got your surgery and and that's the only thing you can thank goodness for is you got the surgery because there's a lot of surgeries here in california have been put off so and i just i'm not going to say who it is but i just found out one of my cousins has um thyroid cancer and it's thyroid cancer right yeah, yeah. and he i didn't know he wasn't telling anybody about it and he told um, told a couple of us the other day because his doctors called to say they canceled all appointments and all his therapy has been canceled because they are not doing treatment on a lot of different cancer patients now. So, and then of course they're cutting out surgeries and I was supposed to go for just a regular mammogram. That's been all canceled, everything's canceled. So be thankful, rest up. When you feel better, you'll go out in the garden a little bit, start growing in the house. And uh, how do you pronounce that name? It's C R E C R E A. Creative touch. Creative touch. Be thankful that you've had your surgery now before this major thing. And now start growing. Like I said, start growing some stuff in pots in the house. This is just growing in the window. It's just some uh, Swiss chard. And then when you feel better and you can go out in your garden, you can start planting in your garden and containers in the ground, whatever you normally do. But your surgery is done before this all started. So I would be thankful on that. And Paolo? Paolo, He yes. says, stay safe. And he's saying bye for bye. now. Yeah. yeah, we're going to have to say bye because no joke. I want to get into the garden and do some stuff. I want to get some squash seeds growing. And um, I keep seeing things. Yeah, no, 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 the, the little, this, that. That right there, is that the same person? No, it's a different one. It's not lining up. Sorry, I'm trying to delete some, something, that's all. I do need a moderator. Yeah, at this time of the day, they might be 
they have nothing to waking do. Up. They're, they're waking up. <laughs> they're waking up, and uh, this is how they're getting their kicks. What are you going to do? All right, so we'll see everybody soon, and we are going to get in the garden. And if you've got questions, ask questions. If you've got great, you know, ideas, spread the ideas around because we all can help each other that way. And I think I think gardening is going to be be even bigger afterwards, just because people are going to find out. You know, you feel better when you eat food out of your garden. I feel better when I eat food out of the garden. I I can feel it right away. And if I get onto a junk food thing, I feel it. Believe you me, I do feel it. So either way, I'm going in the garden. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye. Do you have anything else to say? No. Nope. Okay, bye. See you soon. We'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.